The views expressed on this Turnbuckle Tabloid live stream or Turnbuckle Tabloid podcast episode do not reflect the views, thoughts, or opinions of the RageWorks brand, including the RageWorks podcast network, RageWorks content partners, advertisers, and affiliates. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay the Red Santi, host of Turnbuckle Tabloid. And as you know, here on our show, we are big fans of music. Pop, R&B, reggae, rock, whatever have you. We love to play it here on the show. But what we want to play is your music. And how can we do that? So you guys want to take and share in our Patreon. Ladies and gentlemen, go to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Turnbuckle Tabloid. And just... Give us a small donation, and we would love to share your music on our show. Whether you're an artist, you're a singer, you're a rom, you're a producer, whatever it is that you guys do in the field, we want to share your music to the masses and our hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of listeners and viewers and followers. So make sure you go to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Termical Tabloid and be a part of our show as much as we want to be a part of sharing your talent. So hope to hear from you guys soon and enjoy the show. Yo, 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 brah, Notorious One and Seven is here. LEX, OG, 5150, the Latin Frank White. And you're listening to Turnbuckle Tabloid. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Three, two, one. Business is always on the on, on, on the lips, kind right. of the tongue. You have to, bro. You have to talk. Always. Branding, branding, branding. <clears throat> yeah, man. But uh, that, that's been on my mind the past couple of days. And listen, you got to do something for the brand, bro. I mean, I I, I just think you're shaking up the whole thing. Uh, but that, with, but I, that's what it for is. For you guys because... who are listening in right now, uh, our young Oski who has branched off to have his his own world of business and. Uh, uh, social Dolls. media promotion and uh, do, don't say that. I know I can't believe I just said that. Uh, that was just me being blasphemous, ladies. As though. you know, I'm the man from the Funko Hub, Mister Mister Funko Hub himself. Yes, uh, sir. He's having himself a bit of a, uh, uh, I, I guess, advertising a or business dilemma. Or what to do? I just next. feel like I've reached my ceiling in terms of like <laughs> I, re- I reached my ceiling with that na- with the we <laughs> blew your load. I blew my load too quick, mm. and I feel like. I feel like if I wanna if I wanna keep growing, like people need to understand that like I'm not just a generated page sucking beef, everyone's beef. I also have a a personal side to it that I ha- I could do work of my own, terrible work. My art, I can't take pictures for shit. But it, I think I think I think it adds a fifty fifty perspective to people. Um, because a lot of people have been asking me, "Yo, where's Matt? Like, I want a side of you on this page. Where's your fucking shit?" I'm like. People ask me, are you a business? Are you like a company? I'm like, no, I'm Matt. I'm a collector at first. So I'm, I mean, for me, I, I when, when when it came to Turnbuckle Tablet, I never thought of you know, I was Jay Santi first to do right. the you know, the who wrote for Rage Works or who went to indie shows or who commented on wrestling stuff on the Facebook page or whatever. But then afterwards I was like once Turnbuckle Tablet became an official thing, it was like the brand came first. I didn't really, I, I don't even, I don't even get those questions. I don't think people really ask me shit like that. Right, and that's a good point. Like the brand, the brand. I want the brand to still come first. I just want a hybrid. I want a hybrid. I want like I want. I still want it like fifty. I want it kind of like fifty fifty. But I want more. Like the stories are exclusive to everybody else. But when it comes to my posting content. I kind of want people to like start having eyes on my attempt at sort of trying to be artistic and shit like that, because the, the game's changing on the IG. It really is. It's I. It, it is. So I'm trying to evolve in a way that like doesn't change the name. Because someone was like, "Why don't you get rid of Funko Hub at all?" I'm like, "I'm never doing that. Funko Hub is who I am." People even said, "Get rid of the and just name myself Funko Hub." <laughs> 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 but, but like. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know, man. I've just been thinking the past couple of days about how I could change it to make it like a 50-50 kind of thing. Um, uh, well, listen, it's, it's, it's good that you're at these uh, this crossroad and you're having this dilemma because at, at least you're not trying to stay stagnant. You, know, you always want to keep it fresh. Yeah, oh, exa- exactly. That's another thing. Like, I want to be able to like change it up and be fresh and like it, it bring new ideas, like the like the uh, the story idea I, I told you about. Like, mm. I'm trying to like I'm trying to like freshen things up for the new year. So I like these fucking shitheads that we have on our Facebook group page. It's like 700 or something fucking followers and shit, and we put up a poll for the tabbies, and only six people vote. I'm like, the fuck. What the fuck is wrong with you guys, man? Someone, 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 I just be trying to be fresh. Someone told me our voting sucks. I mean, our nominees are not good. And I, and I literally told him, I was like, bruh, we literally have everybody. Two. To be honest with you, we could easily make three, four choices per fucking vote. No, we give you like 10 more or like eight. Yeah, so. but then the other thing is, last year it was different because everybody was on. This year there was only really two or three promotions yeah, that were COVID, running. COVID shut a lot of shit yeah, down. So. I, I, I really sat there and wanted to. What do you want, what do you want an award to be? The, 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 the award for, the, for the, the promotion that did not perform at all this year goes to House of Glory. Yeah, you know, you know, New Japan was shut down for most of the year. Ring of Honor was shut down for most of the year. NWA shut down for most of the year. It's like what? what the only, there was only three fucking promotions running. So and to be honest, you gotta go with those. And to be honest, people are are not understanding that because it's a virtual, we, it's a virtual award show this year. We could actually go on the phone with some of these winners and speak to them via Zoom. So, yeah, uh, something uh, like well, we like you know we can make like 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 the the, the, the um we we were we were handcuffed to the amount of awards we could give because there was barely any bullshit we could fucking happen there during was, there the was year. Nothing. There was nothing out there. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Don't blame us. Blame <laughs> fucking COVID. I'm still trying to bring a goofy ass. Yo, you should do you the worst the worst follower award. And by the way, <laughs> by the way, um, for any of you guys who did say that. You do know it's a fucking bullshit ass award show. Right? I mean, let's be honest here. It's not like it's not, it's not it's not the Dundies, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, that's the best award show ever, son. It's not the fucking at Chili's. Dundies. At Chili's, ladies and gentlemen. By the way, any award show is fucking bullshit. Let's be honest. Really, uh, the, the, Grammys, Gra- the Grammys, the Tonys, are fucking they're all bullshit. fucking bullshit. The Grammys piss me off, especially because they fucking snub my man the weekend. Oh, please, it's all a fucking ass kiss fest anyway, and it's all. All insider people try to promote their own fucking person. They're try trying to, to promote the next young artist because they want. Hey, to, guess who won the award for best new artist? Lil blah, Sweezy. Blah, blah 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 blah. So that their fucking videos and their their yep. their Spotify's could go oh. over another million something whatever. I feel the like fuck. they don't. I feel like they don't acknowledge. I, I feel like they don't acknowledge the people who deserve it more like they acknowledge the people they want to get over. And it's like that's not how you do an award show, man. It's like the Sammy Awards I was last night on SmackDown. Yeah, and, I, and <laughs> it's exactly what it is. It was fucking hilarious. The tabbies is basically when we do the the, the tabbies is it's just we're basically goofing on fucking award shows and we're goofing on wrestling because which I'm fine with. That's the part yeah, of that. That's, that's all that, it is. That, that, that was the idea behind the award show. So wait till you hear the other categories, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, Woof. yeah I got a couple in my uh, arsenal that I cannot wait to show. Woof. Uh, it, it, it's gonna go down a bad road, just like. Uh, Chris Jericho's career what? Oh, Who said that I was about to say Just like Cyberpunk Yikes what a, what, what a turn Oof. that made This week Yikes Um. Yeah man I'm happy I haven't started that one I'll wait until that's better <laughs> I'll wait until that's better I started it And then I said You know what I'll wait till they fix it Yeah I, no no Don't it. don't play it right now yeah, <laughs> Don't yeah, play like, it I got to a certain point And I was like Okay I'll leave it there I, I, I remember where it is I'll yeah. leave it right there I'm surprised you didn't get Like Miles Morales Are you waiting, waiting for the PS5 for that? Or? Yeah yeah I was gonna wait till later for that I'm not in a rush Cause Cyberpunk is done right now Like C, um, CD Projekt Red Is ex, is, requ- is um asking for refunds Xbox has officially asked for refunds PlayStation has officially so, asked for refunds I'm so mad Cause I said that they usually would listen. They usually listen to the fans But they really fucked up because yeah, they, did. they sat there and said that they weren't thinking about the PS4 and the Xbox versions, but it was like, dude, you guys were making this shit since 2012. So you were actually prepping it for next gen at that time. At that uh, time. Yeah, that, yeah. And now all of a sudden you're going to tell me that you really fucking just skipped over a whole thing? Oh, we blame COVID. No, you guys, that's, yeah, don't that's give me that shit. That's not an excuse. That's not an excuse. You, you guys have been working on this game way before COVID, and you promised, uh, you know, your game was the most hyped game of the fucking decade. Okay, let's be honest here. Uh, you had a great reputation with fucking Witcher 3. Witcher 3 went over huge right. uh, with your company, and it goes from that to... People, I don't know if you saw Rondo's video he posted. He was just driving down the street and he fucking flew in the air like a fucking <laughs> like a robot. No, but then uh, the other thing was no. Then the other thing was is like when I, I told you when when Witcher three came out, it was glitchy at first, but it wasn't this bad. Yep. Yeah. This this was bad. And 
they they released their first patch for for Cyberpunk, and it was like, okay, it's so bad that they're talking about we need a major patch by January. Yeah. For for fucking um the last gen console, it's like, why? This should have been already been set. If anything, I would be I would be I kind of assumed that the next gen consoles would kind of have the problems, not the the ones you were been working on. You've been you've been working on the PS4 and Xbox One console models for the longest time, and you're telling me that's the problem? Like, Jesus, you don't even know. It it was just it was, it's a buggy mess. People are fucking disappointed. Uh, and to be honest with you, people are calling this the worst release in gaming history because listen, I'm, I, I've been uh, see, this, this thing it's worse than Fallout 76. I've been killing fucking Mario fucking 35 Battle Royale. I, that's been my shit. Bro. I actually just I'm, I'm playing Super Smash Bros. again because they added Sephiroth. As one of the new DLC characters, and that shit's a official. I've been playing uh, Miles Morales. I gotta get back on Fuser. Uh, that, oh, that I'm getting, is... I, I just got. I'm downloading Fuser on my PC because um, now they hacked it on PC, so now you can download old songs. You don't all the songs and shit. Really? Yep. Yeah. I so gotta, I'm gonna get on that. Um, and then I don't think what game. I don't know what games coming out next, but. Um, there are games to play. Believe me, you have a list of games you got to. Oh, yeah, there's gotta games be. I got to play. There's shows I got to catch. Well, shout out to everybody who, who spoiled uh, the Mandalorian. Who spoiled, yeah, you who spoiled. fuck yourself. I didn't. Well, I didn't see. I haven't seen any spoilers. Didn't see any. Oh, oh well, I, I did. But I, what I did was when someone I saw that someone Pete. It, it did, I, I, I scrolled quick. I was on TikTok. I don't really care about spoilers. I do. But for this, pro- I didn't want to because oh, I waited. Believe me. Because the last time, when I first when I watched the first series of Man- Mandalorian, I was watching it weekly. And I'm like, I don't want that commitment. I want to sit and watch it straight through. Oh, that's what through. I did. I'm on episode three right now because I started watching it last yesterday. Yeah. Because at my job, I, someone spoiled it for me. Well, not, not my job, like on TikTok. Mm. And uh, I'm grateful you haven't seen anything yet because it is not a spoiler where, like, the Mandalorian gets a different color. It is like, wow, I'm going to cry. It's crazy. I'm not saying anything. I refuse, but I, I, I got I, spoiled. I, I have a... I have a uh, uh, I have an inkling of what it is. Do you want to? Do you want to throw it out there? I won't say no, what it is. No, 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 no,
Marowski. Make sure you check us out on all the social media outlets. Check us out on the like group page on Facebook. Sorry, you fuckers. This year's nominees don't wet your whistle. It was because... I guess not. Fucking nobody. I mean, we only had three major fucking promotions going on this this year. What do you, what do you want? We only got to reference those guys. So, guys, go to the group page and, uh, and the, uh, the regular business page and please check out the... The Tabby Award nominees You guys decide The top three Or whatever you guys You decide And we'll be the ones To pick the winners And believe me Just cause you guys Are saying that The, the fucking nominees Are shitty Boy we're gonna make sure That the winners Are shitty as well Yeah I'm making sure That it's opposite day Oh on it's that, gonna fucker. be <laughs> fucked You're gonna be fucked Awesome we just, did, we just, did, we just, did we just admit To hoaxing the entire yeah, Award show Of course Why not mm. Fuck it Might as well do Like the fucking uh, Like the election right we, <laughs> Fuck it Send it to shit Also big shout out To all you guys Who uh who, re- who reached out to me to uh, basically give your your comments and your compliments about this past week's episode with uh, Teddy Hart? Uh, yeah, I got to, I got a couple of people on Twitter telling me how fucking they are so concerned about this man. <laughs> oh, yo, someone on Twitter said that he, they legitimately are concerned for his health. I had a conversation with uh, my boy Jim Fix from, uh, quite frankly, a Howard Stern podcast, and he goes, "Wow," he just yeah, says, yeah, he yeah. says, "Wow." He says, yep. I got to commend you for, because you handled yourself with such poise. He goes, that whole interview was like just a rolled up, bound up uh, mound of cocaine. It's- <laughs> yeah, no, it's... You got and you know what? I really wish we were recording a visual because like the, the face on red was just like, wow, I cannot believe this is happening right now. Also, uh, shout out to um Good Dad Angel who reached out to me the other day and he says, guys, he says, I love the show. And he says, I especially love it now because it's too... Times yeah, a week yeah, yeah I agree And he's like Cause he goes I, I listened to the first episode I, I listened to one episode During the week And I was like Damn I gotta wait Another week for you guys Cause you know He he listens from it To and from work So he goes Now I get to hear you guys Twice a week And it's so much better And so it's Thank you Thank you guys Who appreciate it And especially My, my love Good dad Angel For, for, yeah, for listening day. And sharing all the time But yeah That um that Teddy Hart Fucking conversation Was woof Woof. Well, uh, update. We have not see, heard or seen of Gus. So yeah. <laughs> everybody says, everybody says, you really gave it to Gus, didn't you? <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah. do you want to know why we give it to Gus? Because I don't care nor know who Gus is. He's uh-huh. like, he's like, I don't give a fuck where you shop that, bro. Like, who gives a shit? Fuck, I don't care who Gus is. Make and sure you check us out. Please. On, <laughs> make sure you check us out on Instagram at uh, Turnbuckle Tabloid Podcast, as well as on Twitter at Turnbuckle Tab. Also, be sure you check us out on YouTube and on TikTok at Turnbuckle Tabloid. We're all over the place, ladies and gentlemen, especially on the podcasting outlets everywhere. I was just going through the podcasting outlets like Overcast, Acast, whatever the fuck all these other fucking cast podcasting outlets are. And we're on all them shits. Yeah, I was we're like, everywhere. We're everywhere. I was just like, holy shit. I, I even found it. Someone, someone screen recorded us on Pornhub. I, I could. I could. I, I, I hope I had a shirt on. So, um, it was visual. It was all no, no, sorry, it was all audio. Oh, it was audio. Okay, great, great. But like, I was, still hope I had a shirt on. They animated us though, so it's crazy. I was, oh. So you make sure you check us out on all the podcasting outlets. You got uh, Spotify, Google Play, uh, Google Podcast. Sorry, uh, iHeart, uh, iTunes. We're everywhere, bro. They don't. Yep. No, you can't. You can't say so you don't. You can't find us if Google Turnbuckle Tabloid. We're there. Also, if not, make sure you check us out at RageWorksNetwork.com. That's where you get all the family under the RageWorks. Podcasting umbrella, you have everything that's there when it comes to the to the podcast. It's funny because I, I tell people if you can't get us in one place, you'll get us in the other because not only do you get us on Turbo Tabloid, but you can also get us at RageWorks Network, which our shows are there as well. So make sure you check us out there at RageWorksNetwork.com, and as always, check out RageWorks.net for all things that is connected to the world of pop culture, movies. TV shows, comic books, video games. It's all there. Mandalorian previews, reviews, wherever it is. And everybody's losing their I'm shit so, over it. I'm so upset that that shit was spoiled, man. <laughs> Yo. Like. I've, I've been watching... Um, I've been watching... Oh, by the way, just let me just do the tagline. We do it for the culture, baby. Pop culture, that is. So, I've been, been watching... Um, I started getting into Big Mouth on Netflix. I tried. I uh, did. It's, I find it fucking hilarious. Uh, and you know what? It's funny. I, maybe I need to watch more episodes because I'm not giving it a true chance. Yeah. But uh, I see it and I'm like, this is Netflix's attempt at South Park, isn't it? Mm. It's, yeah, yeah. 
But I like it because it's made by it's done by comedians. So oh, okay, that's that's love right there. Yeah, Speaking of comedians, it. Dave Chappelle, what the fuck was that about this week? What the hell? What's wrong with him? What's going on with him, man? People, are, he's like he's making the the news for positive, negative breakdowns. I'm gla- I glad I'm glad you mentioned it because I did have it in my notes. There you go, Dave Chappelle. I watched his um, I watched his uh, um, uh, his Mark Twain uh ceremony. That's where they. Give the highest prestige to uh, comedians in the business, uh-huh. and he was given the Mark Twain Award. He was the youngest Mark Twain Award winner, I believe, at wow. the time he was because he's forty-seven now. I believe at the time he was forty-five. He got it. Oh. And uh, if anybody knows me, they know I'm a big stand-up comedian. Oh, yep. stand-up comedy guy. You brought, you brought me to my first comedy club. Right. I love stand-up. I've studied it. I've watched it when I was. I started watching it as a kid. I. My whole one, my one thing to do to get off my bucket list is to get on front of, get in front of a, uh, an audience, and do stand up at least one time. Well, I did kind of do it one time, but I want to do it an officially in a club. And I have an admiration for anybody who can do that. One of my favorite comedians now, if not my favorite comedian right now, is Dave Chappelle. He reminds me of an old um, years ago for for you guys who are about my age, Richard Pryor. He, he reminds me of the modern day Richard Pryor. Now, everybody's asking about what's going on with Chappelle and, you know, is he, like you just mentioned, he has a breakdown and all this. So here's what's happening. Dave has come to uh, the realization that as for the business that he did years ago, they basically took advantage of him. Uh, Hollywood took advantage of him. Okay. Which is, you know, the norm. There's nothing, there's nothing That's new not about That's not anything this. new. There's no. nothing new. But, at that time, especially with Chappelle's show, which was, you know, his big, uh, I guess, career launching pad to mainstream uh, media or, or Hollywood, like if Chappelle's show was out now with social media, it would be trending every fucking week. I guarantee it. Yeah, it would trend every week. And the video that I, I came across last night, which I shared, was basically him saying that they, they fucked him. Comedy Central fucked him. HBO, when he pitched the idea to HBO about Chappelle's show, they was like, why would we need you? We don't need you. We could do the same shit without you. Mm-hmm. You know? And it's not only him because there's other comedians who said the same thing. Uh, Chris Rock. Uh, uh, um, Ke- um, um, what's his name? Um, uh, what was it? Not Keenan Pill. Yeah. Uh, Keenan Pill said the same thing. They've all said that, you know, hey, when, when, when um, Keenan Pill came in, they took over the Chappelle show like slot and Chappelle was pissed off that. I was like basically saying, Oh, you just took my show and you just added two guys on it. That's all you did. Right. Basically. So, um, his whole rant now is saying they took it from me. Comedy Central took it. I can't do another show like the Chappelle show because they own it. I can't even, I can't even say it's Chappelle. So show. that's why he took it off Netflix. He took it off. Well, he took it off Netflix because he said he was embarrassed by it because it's like he. What he said is like, it's like you are exploiting my rape. Oh, uh, that's he, right. He didn't want to be that it's like extreme. PTSD being like he doesn't want to be. It's like um. Right. He just, he's like he didn't want to he didn't want to extra- explain it to be that big, but he's saying is like you're exploiting someone sexually molesting me or somebody taking my my childhood away from me and abusing it. And then with HBO Max, which was on it as well. He said, you guys didn't want it before, so now you want to use me now? He goes, no. So he said, I, he said that's why he fucks with Netflix, because Netflix said, you know, I'll I'll take it off because I know that how much it bothers you. Any other company would have been like, fuck you, but Netflix says, nah, we good. And, they, and he's been doing um, specials for them for the past two years, and they've been doing great, so they right. love it. Um, but it's funny because... I was looking at the way that he he does and I he does his comedy and I also bless you thank you and I I look at it at how we do the show damn you right yeah I'm good <laughs> COVID <laughs> uh, maybe no um, no I, I'm I'm, a, I'm not gonna joke like that sorry no um I was looking at it like that way because I said I look at it how we do this show because I said you know we don't have the fucking audience that we should have right we don't have it's the hard reach. it's hard it's it, hard it, it's not only hard because Everybody named Mother has a wrestling podcast. Everybody wants that. You want you want me to hit the sneeze button? Like <laughs> do it. You have one? Yeah. Just, just, like, just hit the sneeze button. There you go. So um, 
because everybody and their mother has a has a wrestling podcast, and the difference with us is that we're not fucking milk and cookies, fucking a wrestling show. We 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 dab it in everything. Even this, the open a salvo like we always do. It's not about wrestling. No. We talk about everything, uh, everything listen, else first. Like I said, we give you guys a million hours to listen to wrestling. Yeah, shit. and for, you know, people go, well, maybe you should tone it down, or maybe you should uh, uh, make, peel back more and just stick to straight wrestling. Maybe not say too much about your personal life. But for what? Then you'll get fucking robo fucking commentary. Yeah, I don't understand. No, but I I admire, and that's how Chappelle. Has brought out his comedy these days. Everything is. You see it. This is what I am. It's out there, and I'm good. Yep. And everybody, you know, everybody says, "Well, you know, he's rich. He don't. He don't have to." And it's like it's not about being money. The money in the rich. He walked away from fifty million dollars. Yeah, yeah. He, he walked away from that. It's not about that. It's not about that. At the end of the day, I come on these mics every week, and I look forward to getting on this shit every week. Right. I sit here and I go. God, I can't wait till Friday or Saturday. Yeah, me too. I look forward to it every day. I look day. forward to this shit. I kid you not, guys. Like when I'm watching wrestling throughout the week, everything that happens, every segment, I look back and, go, and I call Red. I'm like, Yo, I cannot wait to fucking rant about this bullshit. Oh my god, it's it's amazing. I look forward to go on and and, and put these mics on and put together create creative uh, segments and have cre- and constructive criticism and conversations. I look forward to this shit without having to sit there and you know. Bitch and moan about whether or not we're gonna have fucking advertisement or not. We'll get it, we'll get it. We don't, and fuck it. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, once these goes on, and I hear guys like Good Dad Angel, uh, uh, um, uh, Jason Singh on on, on Turbuckle Tabloids um group page, uh, Jim Fix and 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 people like Little Bit and Rondo who cut back and were like, yo, this week's episode was funny or whatever the case may be. You guys make notes here. You guys are assholes. When I hear that, that fuels me to do more on this show. Agreed. So. That that that's what motivates me, and I and that's I I when I listened to Chappelle this week, I was like, wow, that's fucking that's balls, facts. That's balls for what the shit said, what, what he was saying there. Uh, other than that, just a quick rundown before we go into the uh, the rest of the show. Uh, fantasy football. Thank you guys who were part of the Toronto Tabloid Fantasy yeah, I Football. Yeah, fucking sucked. Yeah, I pretty much uh, blew my load and lost in the first round. Of the I fucking sucked. I fuck everyone. I want everyone to hear me one more time. I fucking sucked. <laughs> Shit. I gave the fuck up because you know what? My team sucked and disappointed the fuck out of oh me. Oh my god! It was terrible. I had a great fucking season and just it went kaplooey in the first fucking round. Jesus, but. So far, uh, we're in the semifinals, I believe, this week. Uh, for you guys who are still involved in Turbo Tablet, have your prizes for ever who, for anyone who wins. I believe my brother's still in it. I think he's in there. What would the prize be? Uh, it's a belt, and I'm just gonna it's gonna be a, a championship belt with Turbo Tablet on it and a, nice. and a shirt. Nice. That says I won Turbo Tablet's Fantasy Football League with fucking the logo on it. Hey, that's all we need, bro. Uh, also this week. Uh, pretty much. Oh, and finally, of course, I got to do this last rant. Of course, you know what this be about? It's about fucking um, the environment that we living in now. For you guys in New York City. Oh, jeez. Um, uh, we were we listen. We were doing good. We're doing okay. You literally gave mad clout. Last, you gave mad hype last episode. So yeah, well, I no, want to hear this. Yeah, no, 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 we're we're doing okay. Restaurants are gonna be restaurants are closed, which is semi open vented fucking outside dining. You're Bacteria filled, but I get it though because the restaurants that uh, have ventilation systems basically haven't been fucking updated in like nope, years. Nope, nope. So, it was it was kept in the fucking basement. Yeah, so I can understand why you motherfuckers is out there freezing their both. But really, New York, you were going to try try to tell people not to use the bathroom. Like, what the fuck That's is wrong? Crazy. With you? What's wrong well, with I'm gonna pee on your tent. <laughs> it's like, excuse, hey, excuse me, does this filet mignon come with a diaper? Yeah, right. <laughs> they start giving them um, fucking the fuck? diapers with their fucking items. No, but they actually they actually let it go. They say you know they people you know customers can't use the bathroom. Oh um, wow, what a great treat! Yeah, they, I could pee. They also have started fuck. the roll out, the rollout with the vaccine. Are you gonna take the vaccine? Yes. You are? Not now. I'm probably last on the list, so I I, I, I probably have the chance to get it like next year. So probably summer. I have the opportunity the pr- of taking it. Because you're an essential worker. Right. And I know you are. You already told me your decision. And no. I, and I respect that. No, so. no, I'm not going to do that shit. Matter of fact, you guys take it. Yeah. Everybody, you guys take it. I respect that. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to take it if 
the results come back bullshit. I, mean, I, I, I like I have enough time. I have enough time to see how it goes before making my decision. Like I'm pretty sure like I'm so back in line that I'm gonna have a chance to get it maybe in June. So it's like whatever. Uh, like, no, I'm, believe me. Listen, I'm technically an essential worker now, if, but like nah. If if it comes to the to 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 fruition because this fucking administration right now is holding holding off on bullshit because it's almost as like if they're saying, well, once January 20th comes, the 21st. Here you go. Here's your busload of fucking uh, 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 things that you have to do. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. Get it done. It's almost like they're sabotaging the new administration. Right. Um. Those they'll, they'll, those vaccines are gonna be out really quick. They're yeah, gonna be out. They, yeah, they'll be Pfizer. Out. Pfizer's. He, they're saying that they're holding. They have vaccines. They're ready. It's just getting them released until they get the um the funding to get them released. Right. So they're they're ready to go. For you motherfuckers out there oh, who still don't get it, and believe don't this is real. get it, don't get it. Don't. I'm not wearing a mask. It's my constitution right. It's not in the constitution right. It's not. It's not in constitution. Sorry, it's not about that. It's uh, 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 doing well for your fellow man, just like the good book says, right? When you go on a plane, All right? Yes. Ah, I'm happy you're using that. When you mm. right, but it's true, right? When you go on a plane, right? Where did I hear this from? Me. Was it you right? I told you. Right, right, right. Yeah, go ahead. When you go on a plane, you have to wear seatbelt, right? You have to wear seatbelt when you're taking off and landing, right? You can't get up. Rules, right? You can't pee. Uh, can't get up when uh, when during uh, uh, food service. No one, no, no one missed food service. Food service, right? We can't just open a door if it's a little warm in the fucking plane, right? You can't just, uh, uh, hey, it's chilly in here. Can we open the door? No. You got to pee, right? If that sign tells you you can't pee, you can't pee. Yeah. Right? So, mm-hmm. how is it that you can follow rules on a fucking plane, <laughs> but can't follow some kind of rule? Not even a rule. Just fucking be fucking cordial to the next person. Right. It's all about these people and these fucking this and control. It's, it, they believe that oh they're trying to control us. Nobody's trying to fucking control you. <laughs> well, that's the point that that, that that I told you on the phone the other day. It's like people are complaining they have to wear masks on a plane, right? And it's like, why do I have to wear a mask on the plane? That's a I don't like authority. It's like motherfucker. The the pilot tells you when you can or can't pee. The flight attendant tells you when you can eat. The flight attendant tells you when you could when you can get up. You're basically told authority the entire flight. Yeah, and it's so guess what? So you've been dealing with authority already, and now because it's a political statement, people people think it is. It's not. Now people will not want to do it. It's like okay. No, I, and I laugh because I just I just heard Doctor Phil. I love Doctor Phil. But he's an ass. Oh, is he? No. He just did. He just his thought. No. Is his thought was, well, you know, four hundred and eighty thousand people die from car accidents. No, uh, Doctor Phil. Three hundred and sixty thousand no. people die from pool uh, pool incidents. Four hundred and fifty thousand people die from smoking cigarettes. Doctor. But we're not shutting down the world. It's like. Doctor Phil, no. What? What does the fuck a pandemic have to do with what you know the what? fuck you just you said? You know what, Phil? I'm not gonna call you doctor anymore because you're a fucking asshole. You know what, Phil? Come on, son. Doctor Fauci just fucking vaccinated Santa Claus. Come on, son. This fool. Look at uh, Pelosi, uh, McConnell. They took the vaccine. Yeah, Mike Pence just took it. The man who thought it was fake. Yeah, he took Whoa! it. Oh, I wonder how that happened. Doctor Phil, listen, I'm sweaty. Your fucking your your, your degree, your your doctorates, whatever it is, it must be written on toilet paper. I it, I can't believe you said it, but you're that's crazy. You're, bro. you're yeah, yeah I, I could believe it. I, I was just I was astounded by it. I said, you guys, you got to be kidding me. That but, is crazy, son. But um, no, like I said, guys. It's up to you. They're not mandating it. Everybody's sitting there talking about, well, you know, you it's man. My job, I'm a central worker. I work in the facilities. Listen, even they aren't mandating. They said, hey, you don't wear it or you don't take the vaccine, you just gotta wear your mask. And I'm like, cool, no problem. Maybe one day, maybe, maybe not. as for me right now, no, I'm not taking it. And you know what sucks? Like I wear a mask all day at work and I don't even care anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't even bother even me. me. It doesn't anymore. even bother me. I wear two masks sometimes. Yeah, it doesn't even bother it doesn't even me. Bother me. I don't give a fuck. But everyone else. Hey. The only thing I hate was when I walk out the door and I don't have a mask and I go, fuck! That's the only right. thing that fucking affects me. The only thing that bothers me is when I do my activity for my job and like the kids can't hear me because the mask is controlling my sound. <laughs> that's like, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can run too 
It's like, what, Mr. Matt? I'm looking real cool now. Yeah. So, other than that, this week, ladies and gentlemen, on our Double Decker episodes, on this episode, we have, of course, Wrestling Rundown. Oh, oh God. Headphones, headphones. Yeah, Wrestling Rundown. Uh, we have shit to talk about. Oh, there is tea to be spilled, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have no... Uh, I don't even know where to start this week. I really don't. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll start with uh, Jim Ross has basically been thrown to the woodshed by <laughs> by his, his wrestlers in AEW, which... Yep. Uh, to be honest, he wasn't fucking wrong. No, he wasn't. Um, NXT's going to make an, a, a new minor league show oh, with Gabe that. Sapolsky. The ratings are raw went to shit, ladies and, and gentlemen. And supposedly they want more adult content. Yeah, because barely throwing somebody in a box and letting it on fire wasn't enough this week. Uh, WWE has officially a new Do Not Touch list uh, incorporating wrestlers and veterans who cannot take any bumps whatsoever. And JBL just joined that list. Oh. oh. Uh, we'll talk about who's on that list and more. And... um. Ted DiBiase's brother just played guilty in an embezzlement scandal. So, <laughs> and then we'll say, no, and that's brother, his son. No, um, Ted DiBiase Jr. Sorry, Ted DiBiase Jr.'s brother. Right, right, right. The, the, yeah, uh, Brett just pleaded guilty in an embezzlement and, scandal. And um, we're having a baby! Yay! Oh yeah, that's the that's the news of the week. As you get slammed in a wall the week before, but yeah, yeah whatever, whatever. And also, around the square circle, we have TLC predictions as well as what happened in wrestling this week. And what didn't happen in wrestling. What didn't week. happen in wrestling this week, as well as what else we watched and took uh, took heed to and listened to this week. <coughs> Excuse me, and tons, tons more. And also, on episode 206, uh, 206 coming up, we have a cutting a promo. Uh, haven't decided yet which one it is. We did have one, but then it came up with one. We'll, we'll work on it. It'll come. We'll, we'll figure it out. out. And, of course, to wrap up this year... We have Hank's Happy Hour. We'll be discussing Hank Flanagan and his year in review with uh, our, our guy Hank stopping by. Also, episodes coming out this week, going to be, not this week, or the following week, we're going to be doing Best of, Best of 2020. I know that kind of sucks to say due to, you know, COVID. There ain't but, really best, but... Uh, uh, we have the Best of 2020 this year. There'll be a bonus edition of the episodes this, this week and the, probably the following week. So, guys, don't go anywhere. Stick around. We have a new advertiser to... Turnbuckle tabloid this week and um since everybody else is jumping on fucking cameo why not turbuckle tabloid right let's do it so guys don't go anywhere stick around we'll be returning check you guys in a sec with the holiday times approaching we here at turnbuckle tabloid know the importance of sharing and giving back to our listeners and those who follow us in our social media and our podcasting communities hi I'm Jay Santi here from Turbo Tabloid. Recognize that social media outlets such as Cameo are here to give you the access to us to give that special someone a special greeting or a recognition of their accomplishments of their lives. So the characters here at Turnbuckle Tabloids are here for you on our Cameo to share and give back to you guys the special moments and important messages that we can convey with a few couple of bucks. I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to be as, as proper as I can, but we are we here at Turnbuckle Tabloid are whores, so we're pretty much say and do what the hell you want for a couple of dollars, so our cameo is up for grabs, so uh, with that being said, Turnbuckle Tabloid and our characters are here for you. For example, our man of the hour, Oski, is here to share an example of one of the messages that he gave to one of our fellow listeners. Fresh, what's going on, buddy? It's Matt Oski from Turnbuckle Tabloid. And I wish I was here for better news, man. I really, I really do. Because your mother, your mother paid me, your lovely mother paid me to inform you that she caught you in Target without a mask. Why? Listen, man. I, I, you know I love you, much love and everything, but you cannot go into Target without a fucking mask. Not a chin diaper. Over the nose, buddy. Over the nose. So listen, it's always over the nose. So please do me a favor. Next time you walk into Target, wear your mask, stay safe, and stop being a selfish prick. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. 
here on our Turn Booker Tabloid Camera, we also want to give you a nice and thoughtful response to an accomplishment that you made in your life with one of our engulfed and very, very appropriate Turn Booker Tabloid characters. Hello, Nathan. This is Loki. We hear that you have graduated from dental school. I'm grateful that you are being a part of the dental registry because I am a man who is known to kick out individuals, molars, and bicuspids with my warrior way kick. Be sure to be a productive part of the dental environment because I know I'm going to send a lot of individuals and patients your way. I am Loki, a man who admits to not only being a non-meat eater, but I also have pizza with Brussels sprouts and alfalfa shoots without the sauce and the crust. This is Loki telling you continue to fill out any cavities that are not being taken care of. Thank you and be a dentist the warrior way. We here at Turnbuckle Tabloid also have other characters who are not only aware of what's going on in your life but what you're doing in life as well. Hello there. This is me, Drew McIntyre, WWE Champion. And Johnny, your father, your father Donald, paid me $500 to tell me that he caught you jerking off to the WWE Network last night. And I only have one question for you, pal. What the fuck is wrong with you, you piece of shit? If I find out you do that again, I'm not only going to claymore you in the face, I'm going to give you a glass cow kiss all over the fucking place, and I'll make sure you never jerk off to Brock Lesnar again. Which, by, by the way, was it, did you jerk off to my documentary? Because if so, you're good. Fuck you, and good night. Not only do we deal with our current Turnbuckle Tabloid characters, we also bring back the oldies, but goodies who want to let you know that it's okay to be who you are and be comfortable in your own skin. Hi, Lenore. It's Terry Full. Lenore, I was given $575 by your Uncle Phil to let you know that it's okay to be gay. The family already knows. Your friends already know. Even your job knows. Hell, even your boyfriend knows that you're gay. But Terry Funk is okay to let you know it's all right to be gay. If you won't be a lesbian and be out there licking on other women, the family's comfortable with that, even though you haven't come out the closet yet. But be like Terry Funk and be comfortable with yourself. Because Terry Funk is okay with you, Lenore. Terry Funk from the Double Crows Ranch says, Lenore is gay and it's okay to be gay even though she hasn't told anyone yet. We're here at Termical Tabloid are happy to say to you that our cameo is here to bring much joy and bring much enlightenment to people's livelihoods as well as Eh, let's be honest here. We're not really doing any of that either. We just want the money. And I'll even give you a free one right now. Hey, um, Benjamin, I um, just want to let you know that um, I saw what you did. You went and stuck your fingers in the potato salad when you weren't supposed to during Thanksgiving dinner. The family saw it. Basically, they paid me $50 to call you out in your bullshit and just say, hey, you a nasty motherfucker, especially knowing that COVID is out there. Yeah, what are you doing? I mean... Especially since you, we know since you was like three years old that you used to eat your boogers and 
Yeah, we, we need you to stop doing it. Stop t- sticking your fingers in a potato cell. And by the way, don't even want to know what you do with the pumpkin pie. But in any case, thanks, Benjamin. Just want to let you know. So, so once again, Turnbuckle Tablets Cameo here's for you. Reach reach out and hit us up on our Patreon and as well as on Cameo. Turnbuckle Tabloid. Yeah, we're pretty much ours. If you just if you, you give us two bucks, we'll even shout out your grandmother who's been dead for like twenty five years. We don't care, but in any case. Turnbuckle Tabloid's here and we have your cameo, so give us a look, see. Have a good time, ladies and gentlemen. This advertisement was brought to you by... Turnbuckle Tabloid. Hello, everybody. It's me, Drew McIntyre, the Scottish psychopath. And I'm telling every one of you to get up, show me fight, and listen to Turnbuckle Tabloid before I claymore you in the face. Download, stream, and subscribe, and follow us on all social media outlets. Turnbuckle Tabloid, check it out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of Turnbuckle Tabloid. This is Wrestling Rundown. Yeah, I think this theme is about to run its course. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. It's time, I, I think. It's been here since 2016, ladies and gentlemen. I'm kidding. It's been. I, it's been a minute. It's yeah. been a minute. It's, it's been, been a, minute. a minute. So I think it's. Uh, uh, maybe we should add our own. Maybe we should make a custom theme song with our voices like, yo, what up, motherfucker? Like our own mixtape. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. We should get fucking Isaac to do this shit. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Come, my love, wrestling run down, my love. Um, yeah, I, 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 just as it was playing, I was like, yeah, I think it's time. Yeah, I think it's you know time. what? You know what? You have that, when you have that moment and it just hits you, you know it's time for it to go. Two hundred so. fucking episodes. Let's down. give it the Viking burial. Yeah, time, time, time to move on. So I think I think to incorporate the new song, we should play the this one and then do the the mix up and, and, then, uh, and then officially introduce the new one uh, yeah. soon. So anyway, we need you to do a whole new intro and everything. So it's all right, we'll do it. Right. So as always, I am the Howard Stern of this segment to my Robin Ophelia Quiverzowski. So Oski. Take it away. Last week, we reported that a bunch of talent, including Keith Lee, Otis, uh, the list goes on and on, um, have supposedly been reported to the Performance Center to work on their craft. And uh, on Fox this week, we actually had Ryan Sadden interview Otis and asked him about those reports. And Otis said, well, listen, it wasn't like, hey, we were told to do this and that. The Performance Center is a tool for us to get better. If another big man wants to come up to me and wants to work on some stuff, or vice versa, we're always working. So that report was kind of funny at the same time. We're never not working. Especially now that we don't have live events, we can't really get our stuff out, and we really can't work in front of a live audience every week. Just bottled inside of a little bottle. So right now it's like we're not getting that stuff out there. So we'll find more and more ways to get in the ring with each other, like the Performance Center. So what's the problem? There's no, uh, there should be no problem with us working on our craft to get better. And if we have an opportunity to stay in the same area like Florida and do that, why not? What do you think about Otis's reaction to that? I think he said exactly what I said last week. Nothing wrong with working on your shit. Um, and he doesn't seem like he's mad at it. So what do you think? What do you think about the update on the performance center and all that shit? Because I think everybody should be taking advantage of the performance center that they're, they're all stuck down in Florida. No, I get it. I, I, I pretty much got the, the. You know the understanding of you're always have to work. It's always about learning. It's always about. I get that, but my thing is, you did not take Nia Jax back. That's the one thing I I still have a problem with. Out of yeah. everybody, you didn't take Nia Jax back. Listen, I understand that Keith Lee. Everybody loves him. He's you know he's a, uh, an exceptional athlete. He does great things in the ring, but he's still not used to the whole WWE style. Cause, 
By the way, we got to do a cutting a promo on that because I don't know what the fuck the, the, the oh, WWE style uh, is anymore. Yeah, I don't know anymore. Anymore. What the fuck is I it? I think it's three moves and a finish, and that's it. Boring, uh, boring, boring. Yeah, I, I, it's just... and of It's course, so safe. It's so boring. Huh? And, of course, you if you want them to work like big men, why don't you have fucking big men training them? Right. I don't I don't understand that. Bring in, bring in the big show. Bring in fucking Undertaker. Bring in Kane. You want them to work big, so have the big men teach them. But, yeah, once again, you bring these guys back, but you're not bringing back Nia Jax. Okay. I'm happy to hear the positivity, though, from Otis and everybody, though. It's fine. I mean, you got the best of it. You got a total company line anyway, but still, it's like, I mean, and it's justified, but Jesus, she got to go back, man, honestly. Do you have to ask permission from your father-in-law first? This week, Kevin Sullivan was on a podcast and gave major praise to Conan and said that it must be political why he's not in the WWE Hall of Fame. Uh, Sullivan gave major praise to Conan this week and said that he had the first triple mania. He took over Mexico, damn it. I think one of the tragedies of wrestling is that he's not in the Hall of Fame, not just as a performer, but as a very smart guy. I don't understand how any major company doesn't have him right now. How is he not in the Hall of Fame is beyond me. How is he not a producer? How is he not one of the the um, geniuses of this of this fucking business? It must be political. What do you think? No, he is that um as much as we we we've said so much about Paul Paul Heyman and stuff, even giving Bully Ray his um due. Conan has always been known to have that same kind of mindset. Yes. Uh, Homicide praises him. He loves him. Um, we, we 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 listen. I think Conan is an up and down roller coaster, based on what I've been told. Well, he's been you know from what I've heard in certain books and for certain interviews that he has in his asshole ways, but when it comes creatively, ah, oh, nah, he's he did great things in Impact. He's done great things in 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 Triple A. He's been over there. He's um he he has a he does have a great mindset for the business, and he was in WWE for like a quick second. But the whole thing is with WWE is first of all that once again just like the fucking awards their Hall of Fame is a joke. Oh, it is. Which which well, it's gonna be the next story. But but the Hall of Fame supposedly is gonna get better. Right, but it's still a joke. It's it's a it's basically a boys' club f- for Vince's <laughs> You're right. fucking suck off right. fucking people call it the Broadway shit. Awards. Yeah, it's like but I, I even think not even that. I think it's worse than the Broadway Awards. I think it's like this Vince's to boy toy awards. Yeah, it's basically whoever fucking Vince wants to, you know, lather their ass to bring in some kind of revenue. And you know what the worst part is? Like everyone looks back and goes, "Yo, Sting getting in the Hall of Fame was such a memorable moment." You know, Vince handing him that ring was spec uh, was Vince in his mind going, "I won, you bitch." But Conan, like, but fuck Conan's, you. Conan's um, his 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 um attributes and his his. His creativity didn't affect WWE. It affected everybody else outside of it. So, so he shouldn't, he shouldn't Vince, be the whole Vince is not going to give a fuck about that shit. He, doesn't he care. didn't do anything to draw me any money. And if you want to say the Wrestling Observer's Hall of Fame, yeah, he could fucking be there. But as for, for Vince, hell no, he's not going to give a fuck about that shit. You're a real idiot, you know that. Vin, uh, I'm sorry, not <laughs> Rick Flair uh, this week reported that WWE is actually working on a physical. Physical WWE Hall of Fame, a real building in Florida, and because of COVID, it's halted the production. But we were saying it for months, Red. We've been we want a physical walk-in Hall of Fame with statues, with plaques, and according to Ric Flair, it's happening. So I can only imagine uh, uh, your your reaction to, to the new to this news because I'll be honest with you, if it's legit and if it looks badass. I say when COVID's better, you and me fly over to Florida and give that shit a good a good look see. I think Rick is fucking drinking a lot of fucking Kool Aid that got oh, Hennessy in it. Oh come on, shit. man! <laughs> Kool Aid with Henny. Yeah, Rick tends to Rick tends to say a lot of shit that don't really come to fruition. Oh, so you're something. saying he's lying? <laughs> I don't think he's lying. I think you know sometimes he's jading the truth. <laughs> Rick likes to make up certain things. Uh, I let you know I already have a couple of roles already lined up to be in the Hall of Fame. Woo! I, no, Rick, they're just in your closet. Let's be for real. Nobody I hope knows. this is true. 
I would like it to be. Because you know what? Instead of a ring, giving him the MLB Hall of Fame plaque or like a fucking statue, I mean, I'm fucking okay with that. Like, like if you gave me a Cooperstown for wrestling, like the old, like, like the gear, how about you use the fucking WWE warehouse with all those fucking props that you use? Yeah, dude, with the fist and all the that fist shit. The fist shit? And you put that in a fucking, in, the, in like a Cooperstown kind of setting. Yeah, but the whole shit is that you got to pay, pay, you got to pay for that. You got to pay for a fucking building. You got to pay for... What are you gonna put it at? A fucking Orlando, the, yeah. the, the fucking oh, Universal Studios or some shit like that. I would, I would, I think it's, I think it's worth an investment. I think you would uh, have, you would have constant people there. The the money you would draw from just having a, from selling tickets to get in there, is the photo ops. Make it a big WrestleMania access, but for 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 the history of wrestling. I mean, yeah, I mean they they have the idea. It's an they, easy money. You could grab. walk into your own Thunderdome. Yeah, it's an easy money grab right or, there. Oh, you could cut a promo in a fucking exactly. Next to mean Gene Oakland. There's a shit gift like shop. You, you, you much money that this company would fucking make? I laughed through all that shit I just fucking mentioned. You said, yeah, there's a gift shop. No, I'm saying, uh, I'm saying ways in ways for Vince to make a dime. Everybody's going to the Hall of Fame for the gift shop. For the gift shop. You don't want a picture of you in, in the ring? Yeah, sure. Because I, I want to, I want to pay twenty five dollars for a microphone <laughs> mug. That's exactly what I'm looking for. You, you have a microphone beer glass, but that, 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 that's Man, different. That's true. I got uh, what, what's the other one? The uh, uh, pay forty bucks for I went to the Hall of Fame at. WWE Orlando and I got this stupid t-shirt <laughs> pay 40 bucks for and that knowing shit. WWE with their terrible merch ideas yeah I would not be surprised that it's they made that it's funny you mentioned it because they have um, Louis Black the comedian he's he's uh, I believe he's a contributor to uh, the Comedy Arts Festival um, Center and it's in Jamestown New York yep and I'm so like I'm so excited to go yep but that shit is far. <laughs> is it? It's like it's like at like the the tip of the dick of New York. Oh yikes! And it's like uh, like maybe like a six hour ride by car. Oof. So far, bro. Like, six hours out of New York. Yeah. What? But it's in New York. That's longer than our Philly trip. Exactly. Uh, what it's, the it, fuck? It's, it's like I said. It's like at the tip. It's like the tip of the dick of New York. It's yikes. Right there. Okay. But I do want to go. I, yeah, no. But if it was if it was a I think physical a great Hall idea. of Fame, yeah, I would go. I'd, 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 I'd Hell go. yeah. It's good to be the champion. Mike Shioda was recently released, and he spills all Again. tea. Yes. Again. Mike Shioda was asked this week. Uh, da, 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 Mike Shioda. <laughs> Mike Shioda was asked how it is decided who WWE brings back and who they don't want to come back when talent leave them on bad terms. And Mike Shioda said, and I quote, Sometimes it's a money thing. It's not even who does the job. I think it's all about the money. I've known guys who were in the company, and they may have done something wrong years ago. But if they want to get you, they have to hire you back to get you, if that makes sense. Once they hire you back, then they could get you. Meaning, them hiring you back is basically them give, jobbing you like they did with EC3. Do they want to job you out every week, or do they want to, you to look stupid? I've heard things go down, and unfortunately, sometimes you see somebody that buried the company every which way and talks shit about the company. You think to yourself, that guy will never be back. People who say I'll never be back, I tell them never say never in the business. Because if there's money to be made five years down the road with this guy, Vince will hire him back, even if it means making him look stupid. EC3 is a perfect example. Saw him get clout in TNA, and they brought him back. Vince never wanted him to get over. Vince just wanted him to to, to, to look stupid for other things that he's talked about in the company. He will make the money and then decide what to do with him after that. So the The, the best part about that is that I want to believe that I do. I really I, do. But I want to believe that, and here's why. Because I want to believe that Vince has this fucking memory of people fucking trashing the company. <laughs> but he has all but. But he can't even remember who the fuck is on his roster right now. So <laughs> somebody has to tell him that to do like Bruce Pritchard or fucking Kevin Dunn. Like these are the guys that probably tell you, well, you know, Vince, uh, he was in the, um, the, the Wrestling Observer talking about how WWE treats its wrestlers. Oh, really? That's what he, he did? All right, uh, book him in a against, uh, match against uh, Hornswaggle and make sure he fucking puts him over. Right. <laughs> like that I'll get. I understand right, that. Right. But for Vince to, to basically... Hold a grudge? I don't even think Vince remembers to wipe his ass after he takes a shit. So that's, <laughs> I think that's how fucking dim, <laughs> he dim his fucking memory is these days. So, uh, But, but yes, I could totally believe that. I believe that there's more powers that be that, that would do that. Yeah. Uh, 
it's and like, Mike Short is Mike Short is within the company, so I kind of believe those so, uh, that source. No, no, I, so. I believe that he would that they would do that, but I don't think it's directly Vince because Vince his, he has a fucking maybe it's Bruce. He has a mind of a fucking a uh, 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 fucking hamster. He'll, that, and that's why, and that's why, like everyone says, Ryback right should come back. You realize if they even dare to sign him, which I don't want him, but like for example, like they're gonna fucking make him look stupid. They're gonna job his ass out for a year. He's gonna lose to Fandango every week. But uh, but you see. But this is why I was mentioning about like I mentioned in the episode last week is that like, what do you want what do you want to do with your wrestling career? Do you want to go to a company and be there for X amount of years, make the money regardless of how they use you, or do you want to go to a company and be used stupidly for your craft? But say, hey, I'm, uh, I'm being creative, or do you want to go to a company where fucking you're gonna be recognized for your talent? What, what? So basically, do you want the belts or do you want the money? Do you That's want the belts? Do you want the money, or do you want or, or do you want to be utilized properly? And for the better of your of your talent, of your talent, in your career. Because if you go, what's, to that, do- what's that place for you right now? What's the, what's the place that you think the people who want to just be known for their wrestling in ring work, um, where they it's, should go? It's not the big three. It's not. No, it's not. It's not the big three. I, unfortunately, AW is not in that AW place. AW is run by fucking clowns. <laughs> it's fucking uh, uh, monkeys throwing shit out of wall and making sure that the fucking. The, 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 the gimmicks get fucking over and the finishes are done stupidly. Uh, WWE is a whole shit show. The money's fantastic, but you're going to be sitting there going, oh, well, I guess I'm not going to be used properly for the next fucking year. And uh, <laughs> Impact is just like, whatever, guy, you want to get shot this week? Okay, sure, no problem. <laughs> if you want to go oh, and just man. wrestle, whatever, you, you're either going to go to Japan or I say, Ring of Honor. I say, I say give Ring of Honor a chance right now. Yeah, but if you, if you just, just want to wrestle, by the way, Gotta watch Final Battle I heard it was actually Really good um, I'm, gonna give, I'm gonna give it a try Yeah I gotta watch it It was on last night uh, I was this. I was watching The first hour on YouTube Which by the way That's an, that's probably another segment For cutting a promo Or um, a wrestling rundown But Motherfuckers really Gotta start utilizing YouTube more Agreed They do because Not AW That dark well, shit though But it's probably Gonna be talked about on, 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 um, This week So um, yeah that, I, Like I said I wanna, be, I wanna believe this story Because yeah, WWE is very vindictive. I, I, I see. I've, we've seen it numerous times, but I don't really think it's directly from Vince. I don't. Like I said, he, he has a fucking a, a memory as long as fucking Mr. Magoo and shit. Stupid, 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 stupid. stupid. Congratulations to Cody and Brandy Rhodes as they announce that they are expecting their first child. This week on Dynamite, the couple announced that they are expecting their first child um, shortly before Cody's match with Angelico. And half the wrestling world is happy. Half the wrestling world's confused. You have a baby bump and you just got thrown into a wall the week before. I believe this shit is a work. Um, Red, I don't know what to think. I what, think it's uh, a work. Really? I'm trying to look because I was trying to see if she had a bump with that Shaq interview. Well, she was wearing like something to cover that up. Right. Know. Yeah, she was wearing a cover up. I think it's real. I mean, in all honesty, I just don't know how that fucking you do a spot two weeks ago of throwing her against the wall. But right. Maybe she just found out yesterday. I don't know what the deal is, but uh, it it left people confused for sure. Um. So yeah, what do you think about that shit? Like I said, I think it's a fucking work. Well, if it's a work, then uh, then it's a fucking. You know what? Then I go with you, bro. It's a fucking work. If it's a work, then you guys are going to. You guys are fucking hell. <laughs> you ain't even half a dog. You just a little piece of shih tzu. <laughs> I love yo. I'm sorry. Which, by the way, the acclaimed, you cannot even touch John Cena's thugonomics. Fuck out of here, boy. Copy ass motherfuckers. Did you get to hear um, what Kazarian said to them during the commercials? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I really couldn't take that segment. I really couldn't. Uh, WWE management reportedly asks the writing team to compile a list of underutilized wrestlers, and I have the list. Um, everyone. Everyone. You might, as well just use the whole, you might as well use the whole roster. Everyone. The, the names they asked for are those who think they could shine if they were given the proper opportunity. So we could bury them. There were many names on this list, but on different... Because, you know, it was each person, so there were different names for each list. But the main group of people that were on these lists were Cesaro, Angel Garza, Chad Gable, Carmella, and Peyton Royce. Um don't know why the last about the last two. What was this on SmackDown? 
in general, both in brands. General, what the fuck is Ricochet? <laughs> he could have been on someone's list. These are the list of names that were most on most people's lists. Oh, okay. These are the names that, like, you know, were on four out of five lists. Um, okay. Cesaro, Garza, Gable, Carmella, and Peyton Royce. Um, and... This was Liv Morgan. Supposedly, this was this was this was this was given to Vince himself and. Um, What's Shayna Baszler? She's women's tag champ. You can't really. I mean, she's not her right now. I mean, bullshit. in Vince's eyes, she got a belt on so on, on her. So it's like, but what do you think about um? Once again, I don't care what anyone tells me. You could tell me that they they say this about Cesaro as much as they can, but they're never What's gonna. It's Andrade. Fucking... I don't, don't, don't know. Yeah, I, don't I mean, know. I mean, of course, there's there's. I mean, we have our own list. We probably did a cutting a promo about it before, but. That that's a that's a decent starting list. That's a that's right. a legit starting list. That I can get. Um, I'm, Angel Garza is definitely. Which by I'm the way, not, my yeah, go ahead. I'm not as I, I I don't know maybe I think she's good, but I don't I don't see her being like that great. Like Who? Peyton Royce. No, I, I don't see it. I don't I don't know. No. I mean maybe because of her looks, yeah, but she's too thin for me. As at this a point. as, <laughs> as a right. ring work, I'm not. I mean she's not bad. I I put her over the fucking Bellas anytime. Um, but. Uh no, that's a that's a solid list. Yeah, I, I I agree with it. Really? Yeah, you just like I said, the ones that I mentioned, like a Ricochet, Andrade, uh, Shayna, like those 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 are the ones that really need to get the bigger put, yeah, get some big pushes there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there there there's but, a bigger list there that needs to be seen uh, and needs to be discussed. Um, yeah, but that's a that's a good start. I'm the landlord, and rents due, you son of a bitch. I remember that. I remember that drop. That's actually pretty interesting. Um, let's see. Bruce Prichard reportedly buried the way WWE NXT trains talent to Vince McMahon. Uh, that's, that's that's another story we have here this week. Supposedly, people like Bruce Prichard and other producers in the back are going up to Vince McMahon and saying that they are not happy with how the Performance Center is training their NXT talent. And uh, because of that... Um, they want to make a change. So because of this, they, there is a report that NXT will be adding a minor league show with the help of Gabe Sapolsky, um, known promoter, known promoter in the world of Ring of Honor. The list goes on and on. Evolve. Um, you could just call it Evolve, but okay. Uh, and that it will be on the WWE Network and will be the AAA of NXT. So uh, what do you think about that, Red? So you're doing a minor league of the minor league. Yes, Supposedly, Bruce Pritchard and Vince don't call it minor league no more. Supposedly, they're calling it a third brand. Like, they, like, like they're literally they don't call it minor league no more. Yeah, but you don't treat it like a fucking third brand. That's what I say. This is, that, that's what I'm saying. So make any fucking sense. First of all, but they, should, uh, you could, if it, if you're gonna do that, don't put it on a network. Yeah, no. There's three shows that shouldn't be on a network. You should put it on fucking YouTube exclusively. That's true. One is this this new shit. We should call it NXT Evolve. I guess. I agree. Uh, number two, main event. Yeah, that should be on YouTube. That should be on YouTube. Agreed. And number three, it should be 205 Live. Yeah. It should yeah. be on YouTube. These, those shows do not benefit on being on the network. I mean, they they don't. just don't. Nobody's watching it. It's, they'll have a better audience on YouTube. You're actually... It's more accessible. It's free. And you'll get to see the talent more. And then, and, you know, when they do come up on an NXT or on a... You'll know on, who they on, are. On, on, on Raw or SmackDown, you'll know who so they are. So basically what you're saying is AEW Dark's a success. Right. So, right. so after everything you said about AEW Dark, AW. You're, you're agreeing it's good now? No, I don't. I, I still think it's shit. <laughs> it's a good concept, though. But the the fact is, is that at least pro- you're you're giving you're giving away content. Yeah. So While that exploiting new, fans, st- new stars. Right. So at least you're bringing you know the idea. Of, AEW has three show has one show on YouTube. WWE will have three. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And at least. You know, as much as I say, really, now I gotta go watch another show. But there are people who would watch it. Agreed. No, I, bro, I know people message me every week. Yo, you have to watch Dark. You have to watch Dark. I watch Dark, but I watch Dark in snippets. And when I watch Dark in snippets, it's still shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not watching it a, a full hour of fucking Dark. Dark's actually three hours. And this is what I'm saying. I'm not watching. A, Dark has like 16 matches. <laughs> the fuck? I, th- th- who's watching that? That's insane. Yeah, it's a lot. I have, I have a to, lot. I have to masturbate. I mean, come on. I gotta play Miles Morales. What? Is that too loud? Yeah, yeah not loud enough. Um, no, but they do. There, there, there needs to be a um. What you go? They, they, they need to start branching out on those. Kind. Do it on Facebook. And NWA did well with it. Go on. You use uh Facebook Live as a as 
one of those tools for 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 drawing in your audience. I I, I think it's, it's maybe it's, it's maybe a mis, it's maybe a miss opportunity. maybe go on Twitch. Why when we could um get money for it? Shut the fuck up, Vince. You check I fucking jack off. You about to get the f you. Vince McMahon wants out of the box ideas that can help boost ratings for the show. After Jesus, this is a WWE heavy fucking um yeah down, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. Um, there's unhappiness behind the scenes, and um, people are reporting that the USA Network is furious due to the terrible ratings of Monday Night Raw, and that changes need to happen ASAP. Supposedly, USA Network also wants more adult content. Not sexy adult, but dark and violent adult. Kind of like gory or a little more violent. Not stripping, not mud bitch matches. They want dark horror-like content. This isn't the first time the USA Network has asked for the company to be more adult. Back in 2019, they did the same thing. And quietly, WWE went went back to their corny ways. Uh, We're listening to the fans. We hear you guys. Two weeks later. No. Another thing that uh, people are saying that the low ratings have to do with Monday Night Football, but I'm sick and tired of that excuse. No, football, that that was a great game that night. Right. That, that, that game was fucking ridiculous. Fucking Baltimore came back, Lamar, Lamar Jackson looked like he had to go take a shit and came back and he fucking uh, won the game for them. But their ratings were low. Vince Vince, so, also, Vince Vince also went on to say that the holidays they usually he he's a, he, he usually says drop in ratings for the holidays. No, no. Um, basically, he's making excuses, but Dude, the USA Network wants a change right now. You opened up the segment with fucking story time. Yeah, People yeah. went like this: click. I'm not watching why, this shit. I called you. I called you with that bullshit. Yeah. I was like, wait a minute, what I'm am I watching? Watching this shit, and I'm not mad at yo. I'm telling you, I've been saying it for the longest. We've been saying it here on the show for the longest, dude. How about you start a, a, a fucking show with wrestling? Just wrestle. Yep. Just start a match. AEW does it every week. That's what fucking starts. That, that that's what brings in their audience. They don't start with a fucking promo. As soon as the fuck, it's not the best friends or somebody starting a fucking show. <laughs> At least they started with fucking wrestling. As soon as you go on to NXT, it's a fucking promo. It's like, come on, guys, like. Let's start with fucking. Why don't you? You know what? You what usually would captivate me when I, the show opens and there's the roster around the ring, right? And then it's either going to be like a State of the Union address, or I like those openings, or it's going to be a, a lumberjack match or some shit. I'm like, hey, at least somebody's fucking. At least he's starting something, right? I, that's why I appreciate the, I, That's why I appreciate when AEW and NXT start off with literally just a match. There's no or, entrances. Oh, when the or, or when the um. Before the, the theme music hits, the camera just pans and somebody's getting the ass whipped. Right. It's like, holy shit, what the fuck is going on right. here? I like those. And then you watch, and then all of a sudden you play the music, uh, whatever fuck theme music Raw is now and shit. And then it goes into, and then somebody's still getting their fucking ass whipped. I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck is going on here? Remember what I told you? I forgot what it was that we were discussing, and I told you, I said, a person's attention span. If you don't catch it in the first two minutes, You're they're done. moving on to the next thing. Agreed. And that is exactly. It's like Tinder. I, if I don't fucking attract, if I don't attract you, I'm swiping left, boy. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but looks like I see where you're dating at. All right. I don't, I don't. I don't do no dating apps. Uh, okay. Do you understand me, Heffa? <laughs> I can't. Red, any news on your side before we close it out? Uh. <sighs> That, it sounds exciting. You sound happy. You sound, no, you sound just, like I just I hate thrilled. having these. Oh, um, Jr. buries the AEW wrestlers. It seems as though that um, he basically tells them not only on the uh, commentary but also in his in his podcast that um, in AEW they're pretty much, especially when it comes to their high spots with the uh, Tope Suicida or when he dies from the top. It looks like they're pretty much standing around huddling up, trying to camp, catch warmth amongst each other until something happens. In which Brandon Cutler took offense to it and made a Twitter snide remark about it. And I got to tell you, he's not fucking wrong. Right. He's not wrong. No, he's not. It, it's, it's, look, okay. You know, everybody talks about, you know, wrestling has evolved. This is what we do. And I, yeah, but there's still, and I said it last week, there's still your fundamentals in wrestling. I'm, we've been talking stand up comedy today, right? Yep. If I go to watch a stand up comic, and I keep watching his same stand-up Or he's doing uh, Different stand-ups And it's the same fucking joke Guess what? I'm not gonna laugh anymore Right Because I, I know what the, heard it. I know what the joke is gonna be Yep So 
unless you come with new material, mm, mm, you, you're just a stale comedian. You, unless you come with new fucking moves, mm, you're just a stale fucking wrestler. So every fucking match is a Tope Suicida. From the top, he falls on the pile. Then you're falling on your own people. You're not even falling on the heels. Yeah, yeah, right. It's a fucking mess. Yeah, it's a whole clusterfuck. And Darby Allen even agrees. Oh, that, oh, but you know why? And I and I and I and I fucks with what what Cornette says. Cornette says I like Darby. I think he's a fucking a weirdo, or whatever the case may be. He says well, he does it right. He does it right. And Be- and Brian Last says yo, he throws his shit. Like when he dives, he wants to hurt somebody. Exactly. It's not. It's not. It's not, it's not a pirouette. Yeah, I, no. I listened this week. Yeah, right. <laughs> he said, you know, a pirouette. What the whatever fuck? the fuck that is? I don't know. A pirouette. Whatever they say in fucking sorry. <laughs> I love when you fuck up the English language. Yeah, whatever. Pirouette. <laughs> pirouette. There fuck him. <laughs> no, Shit on my true. way. I don't fuck it. He, he he throws it in, and that's what it's supposed to be. But you're not diving to get ten, a, a ten out of a ten on Dancing with the Stars. You're, I swear to you, I should not be seeing FTR do dives. I, I agree. I can't. I can't they with do? that shit. But uh, they can't. They I should hope, be uh, doing it. No, they should not. But. Um, no, I, I, I agree. JL's not, the only thing that people were mad about is like you don't shit on your own company. Well, sometimes you might need to, so that fucking, you know, you your, your wrestlers wake up. It has to be done. Right. Uh, AEW is also told to catch your dives. Apparently, they're not paying attention to uh, when a dive spot does occur, and wrestlers aren't catching the people. Maybe you shouldn't be doing the shit anymore. So uh, yeah, pretty much yeah. they got a tongue lashing in the back about that shit. As well as they should. I think saying JR's done with AEW. I think I think JR is actually getting over this shit. No, it's like I say, he's got a good check. He's got money. And, he's on the road. And honestly, he's a guy that says, you know what? Hey, um, I've been in business for X amount of years. I, 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 you know, just because you pour syrup on shit, don't make it pancakes. So this right here is shit, and you get you guys got to fix it. Step up your game. Absolutely. And uh, that's it for me. That's, that's it for me. Yeah. So I'm done. All right, guys. When we come back, we're going to have a round the square circle. We've got TLC coming up as well as uh, what was on uh, the marquee for wrestling this week and what we God. watched and listened to. So, guys, stick around. We will return. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer to your prayers is here. My name is Ariella Nix, and you are listening to the Turnbuckle Tabloid. Circle, ladies and gentlemen, didn't go and get vocal this week. I have to um fix things. Got to fix some things. So all you guys who listen to us on Get Vocal or watch us on Get Vocal, sorry, <laughs> probably probably for Christmas. Um, because I, I, I there used to be a link to where we would go on Get Vocal and it would go straight to Facebook. Yeah. But it's not doing it anymore, so I have to find out a way to get that link back. Right. So um, uh, I'm sorry, Ben. I'm sorry a little bit. I know you guys enjoy that. I know Good Dad Angel is going to get involved with that too, but it's uh, all right. Next time, next, next time, next time, guys. Next time. So around the square circle, ladies and gentlemen, and now TLC predictions. Yes, sir. TLC is this Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, and um, the show will be at least three hours with <laughs> bullshit and. I know, no, no. We can't even say that because they've actually been pretty good when it came to um, their timing lately. Yeah, they because they aren't good. WrestleMania. The fact that we're surprised, we're actually pleased that a TLC review is going less than three hours is yeah. scary. Um, but there are supposed to be surprises. There's supposed to be a couple of returns. Uh, so let's talk about it. First match of the night we have is the women's tag team championship matches. We have Nia Jackson, Nia Jax, and Shayna Baszler versus Asuka and question mark um who do you think is the mystery partner and Lana makes a comeback everyone's saying it's Charlotte I don't think so I think they're gonna save that load for Royal Rumble uh Lana makes a comeback (laughs) yep Lana Lana and the crowd goes mild I actually have a different um a different pick here I actually have 
I actually have Man- Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke coming back and winning the belts last minute. I don't think Oscar goes with the match. Mm, I think okay. I-, I think Oscar gets hurt in the back and they because they don't want to fight that night. Right. Or they and they jump her. They wiped out two of them and they go, okay, we're not gonna we we're off tonight. And all of a sudden, Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke come back and I think Mandy and Dana will win the titles. That's you know what that actually shakes it up a little bit. Yeah, it does. And, and it breaks up and, fucking and, Shane and, and, and fucking them, and I think Nia Jax. And I think it gives Shane the op- singles opportunity you want her to have. And send Nia fucking to the big people class. Get the fuck out of here with Yikes. this shit. She needs it. Yeah, she so needs it. I have Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke there. Okay. Um, Raw Tag Team Championship. We have as we have the New Day versus the Hurt Business, and uh, I'm all Hurt Business here. Hurt Business got to win the belts, man. With with the powers that be, please do what we need to see, which is have the Hurt Business win, please. Yeah, imagine the Hurt Business with, the, with Bobby as the U.S. Champ. Um, uh, the you know they have the tag belts. You know we need all the blacks to have all the belts. All the blacks. Where the where uh where we're culture right? Yeah, we, we want all the blacks to have the gold. You know, <laughs> blacks like gold. Well, yikes. Uh, we have the fiend Bray Wyatt versus Randy Orton in a Firefly Inferno match. Can only imagine what the fuck that means. Um, I'm assuming that means the Firefly Funhouse will be in flames, ladies and gentlemen. I have, I have the fiend winning this one. I have the fiend too, and somebody did a uh, a breakdown of Bray Wyatt's former rivalries. Yep, and he got his revenge. Uh, he had a rivalry with Bray. Yep, got his revenge with the fiend. Had a rivalry with Cena. Got his revenge with Cena. That's uh, that's the that's the pattern they're going with. And it looks now like it's, it's going to be the same thing with Randy. Yeah. So, so who you got? Got um got the fiend in this one. All right, we got SmackDown Women's Championships. We have Sasha Banks versus Carmella. I have Sasha Banks retains the belt, uh, but I do think it's by roll up. I'm going the same way. Uh, this viral is not done no, yet. No, it's not. And no. Uh, yes, it'll be by um, yeah by roll up. WWE Championship as we have Drew McIntyre Drew versus AJ Styles in a TLC match. I have Drew McIntyre retains. I have at least one spot with AJ Styles' bodyguard carrying him on his shoulders for the fucking belt. I can already predict the whole match. <laughs> the, the guy, whatever his fucking name is, Jordan. Uh, I don't even know. Uh, Big Jord. Big Jord. He's going to interfere somehow. But at the end of the day, I have Drew McIntyre retaining the belt. I have him retaining as well. But I won't be surprised if somebody else makes an appearance. Like who? The Miz. That's possible. That is very possible, man. I, I wouldn't be surprised. That actually works. I, can, I won't be surprised if Miz cashes in. It's shit And you know what That's why I love The Miz And I hate What happened to my tablet What the fuck um, that, That's why I love The Miz And not Otis Because The Miz Makes you on your feet About that money In the bank briefcase mm-hmm. Not fucking make it A lunchbox Right Alright Universal Championship To close out the night Is we have Roman Reigns Versus Kevin Owens In a um, I think it's a TLC match For the WWE Universal Championship I have Roman Reigns Retaining But this is my match Of the night I think Kevin and Roman Is the best story On TV right now Uh, Every week on Smackdown They're killing it As we'll discuss later on But I I got Roman Retaining I have Roman Retaining As well And it's going to be A a doozy I think it's going to be A great match And Kevin Owens Is going to finally Come back to being serious Um, Thank God so that's our TLC predictions. Red, let's start it off. What do you listen to this week? This week, uh, as I said, I listened to Cornette. Cornette was fucking hilarious this yeah, week. Yeah, no, I actually did t- I did tune in this week, and um, he was happy that Jim Corn that JR was on his side, bro. That and fucking uh, the cameos that they were listening to this oh, week. Oh, it's oh, great. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was it was play, um Guess the price for the cameos. That's great. Was, See, we should do that shit. <laughs> he go, we should. We got to do That'd that again. That'd be fucking great. We got to put that as a, on, on the list. Um, he says, um, <laughs> how much, Brian Lass is like, how much do you think uh, Hacksaw Jim Duggan charges? $150. $75. What? <laughs> <laughs> You're shitting me. That's that's genius. That's genius. And he tells, you know, Brian is like, dude, you, you got to do this. He goes, who the hell has the time? Yeah, honestly. Jesus. Fuck, fuck this. And Miro's doing this. Yeah, Miro did a fucking cameo and he's like, Bushkin of Froskin. Nobody seen this going to fall for them. I'm going to Bushkin of Froskin. Miro. And, goes, and now that I'm done speaking in my in that other tongue, I'll speak to you in English. I want to say congratulations on it. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is that? It sounded like he was doing the what voice the, from The Exorcist. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? I don't know what the fuck that was about. Um, 
What else did I have this week? Um, yeah, pretty much it, it, it was that, and uh, all I, I listened to a Chlor- only listened to Cornet exclusively. Yeah, I was only going in this week. I was just listening to a lot of stand up comedy and shit. There you uh, go. Uh, it's for Dave Chappelle, man. Yeah, with that, uh, Louis Black, uh, Justice for Chappelle. I, I have a couple of yeah, I had a couple of stand ups this week, but wrestling wise, I was more watching the fucking shows this week. I was Me too. actually. Focusing on the shows this week. Yeah, and even though my eyes almost bled, yeah. um, I, w- I I did pay attention. So yeah. let's go right into Monday Night Raw as we had. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. Red did Bray Wyatt open the show? Uh, what on what Raw? Yeah, or maybe I'm wrong. No, Raw. You know what opened up the show? I don't. Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. My bad. My bad. <sighs> Do I even have to talk about this? Okay, I have. Quickly. I have, I have to. All right. Um, to open up the show, we had Miz narrating the. Uh, it was the night before TLC with um AJ Styles and the bodyguard with, with the light. Um. Oh God! I, Red, can you can you please save me? I don't want to talk about this. Well, basically they were doing um uh, dinner theater. <laughs> I feel like I was watching shitty um wish wish Broadway. Yeah, and Broadway on Wish. And, yeah, pretty much Miz and AJ and fucking uh, Morrison were doing a their own versions towards the night before Christmas, which was TLC the night before TLC. And it was fucking horrible. <laughs> and they wonder why the, the ratings are so down. Went to shit, and you you know, like I said, can't capture the audience in the first two minutes. They're clicking the fucking channels. If you were a fan, if you were a person who hasn't watched wrestling in ten years, and you watch that as your comeback, and let's give this a try, you really think that you I'd be interested? Um, no, <laughs> no. Everybody, what the fuck is this? It's absolutely terrible. Like, I don't, uh, I... So, yeah, that pretty much was that. And uh, there was, you know, AJ wasn't happy about the end of the story because it had Miz winning the belt and blah, 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 Whatever. blah, blah, Whatever. blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Whatever. Bullshit, bullshit. All I hear is bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. It was a terrible opening. Miz is a gem, but you know what? Yeah, I know they didn't like this fucking segment. The Mor- Morrison's a fucking Morrison dressed up as Drew McIntyre from Braveheart. Uh, he tried to get copied, f- which the only thing I appreciated was Morrison dressing up as um, him because Braveheart. he because Braveheart. he declared why because he did that when he faced Drew McIntyre in two thousand like an eight. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was an ode to um, a previous banter. So that was the only thing that I was cool about. That's a guy who's not who's who's, who's happy to get a fucking check. Morrison loves that check. Yeah, he should have been on that list. And too, his wife's about to join up. He needs to fucking he um he's he's another one that needs to be recognized too. Absolutely. Yeah. So that that opened up raw, and then uh, the, the rest of the night was just forgettable. Let's just go through it. Um, we had. Um, in no particular order, we had the her business defeating New Day and Jeff Hardy via submission. Uh, it was uh, in a, uh, I think it was a six-man tag. Uh, Bobby Lashley locked Hardy w- w- uh, in a hurt lock. Um, Cedric Alexander tried to be, of course, the Glory Hog once again, blind tagging himself. Are you liking the side of Cedric Alexander? This um, selfish, I want all the spotlight. Like this is my time to shine. I, I do, love it. I do, but I'm also like, guys, don't, let's not start teasing the breakup, please. It was too soon. Yeah, let's yeah. not do this. So that happened. We had Lana defeating Nia Jax via pinfall. How the fuck is that even in my notes? I can't even believe that happened, but uh, it was bullshit. After a stomp, uh, Jax was not was dominating Lana throughout most of the match, but of course. Lana escaped, kicked Nia's legs out with a, and hit her with a stomp before a pin. After the match, Shayna Baszler attacked Asuka backstage and then came to the ring and helped Nia Jax beat up Lana, hurting her so badly that she could not compete at TLC and Asuka would need to find a new partner for the match. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Elias officially announces Jackson Riker as his bodyguard. Red, I want your react. Re- we, I want your reaction to this one. As Riker said, he saw the light and would not allow people to continue interfering with Elias's concerts. Then our truth interfered with Elias's concert. <laughs> of course, <laughs> leading to a slew of superstars to chase a truth through the ring before Riker took out Grand Metalik to end the segment. What do you think about? Them not releasing Jackson Riker, but giving him a different role as Elias' new stage bodyguard. I love the subliminal uh, undertone where it's, uh, he changed my life because of his music. Right. So it means I'm not a Trumper anymore. <laughs> I guess. No, but you know what? 
Smart move by WWE. It was for doing smart. It. You, smart didn't, you didn't release him based off political belief, and you gave him an yeah. you gave him an opportunity that that he could possibly well, shine they, in. Well, they they kind of they kind of fucking threw Cass out because of that shit. Well, he was an asshole too, but Cass was um he was a big Trump supporter as well. So big that, Cass. Yeah, yeah. He was Is a his big... mom a Trump supporter? Either? I don't know. Because you know, you know, I know, you know, I know, you know, yeah, I know, you know, Mama Bear, but yeah, I don't. I mean, I don't know her like that. Like, we, have, <laughs> we have beers and shit, but no, but no, I, I wouldn't be surprised by anybody these days. But no, I, I, I he, that was one of the fucking reasons. Because but the, Vince is a Trump supporter, so what the fuck? I don't understand. Yeah, but I think it's different when you're fucking um, when it's your talent rather than you. Well, Vince is a Trump supporter because like he's friends with him he's and, his, with and his him. wife's in the cabinet. Cass is like, yeah, I believe in all his fucking beliefs and shit. It's like, you don't think Vince believes in those things? He just cares about the money. He doesn't get about none of that shit. <laughs> money first. Yeah. Listen, regardless of what you say about Vince or whatever, fuck the fucker has way more success in the business than fucking Trump. I agree. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, uh, other than that, I, I think they slid them in just like they did with the um, with the Knights of Corbin. They slid them in the right spot, so it, it, it's a good look for and it, you know it, it, it elevates Elias as well. So absolutely. Yeah. Up next, we had the Miz and John Morrison defeating Keith Lee via pinfall, and the world went pissed. The world is not happy about this, but I'll be the first one to tell you, it was a handicap match. Miz and Morrison are great talent. They're 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 great superstars. So for me, I don't have a problem with this. But a lot of people, they of course did. Um, the numbers game was too much in the handicap match, of course, as expected. Miz and Morrison hit Lee with a series of kicks before Lee caught Morrison on a springboard. Um, they 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 both of them piled on Lee for the pin. Red, do you think this is a problem? Because I generally don't. If uh, Miz, who's going to be a future champion soon with the Money in the Bank, and Morrison, who's known to be a great superstar, versus one superstar, kind of. Is realistic. It's a handicap match. Well, they beat him with, with a double submission. So I mean, it's a, do- it's a handicap match. And you put and you you, you you he didn't you didn't hurt him. Exactly. But people, yeah. people people are saying that he that they, they did. People are saying that he's buried. You he didn't hurt him. It, it took two guys to beat him. What exactly. Two great talents. My, it wasn't like Lucha House Party. It was fucking Miz and Morrison. Yeah, so like, you can't be mad at that. Up next, we had Mace defeating Ricochet via pinfall, which, by the way, I want to point this out. WWE actually recognized Mace as the BDO Madden this week on Raw. Actually said it. Uh, they, 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 they didn't hide it, and uh, people were talking about that. But Mace defeated Ricochet with a sit-out slam. Uh, Ali was on commentary during the match and sent Slapjack and T-Bar to interfere. Uh, after that, they beat the shit out of Ricochet as a group, and uh, people are saying that Ricochet will join Retribution. To give it more validity, um, more what's the word? Um, yeah, you did that. You, eh, you all right. it was a good word. All right, what do you think about that? Um, I think Ricochet needs to go to SmackDown, man. Ricochet doesn't need it. No, he really doesn't. <laughs> he really I don't doesn't think anybody need needs that. I don't, I don't think, think anybody need. needs that. It's 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 now that fucking you thought Retribution was gonna be like getting part of NWO or some shit like that or Bullet Club. Retribution has now become like you're part of the oddities and shit. <laughs> fucking. Doink. You're part of the Misfit Toys. Yeah, like fucking Golga and all the motherfuckers. Whatever. I, um, Is I, Retribution I, a failed? Yeah, it's a fucking. It's over. I, you you fucked up all those guys. They did. Fucking, they, you you killed them all. I agree. They they really did. They really fucking did. Uh, also on Raw this week, we had Dana Brooke defeating Shayna Baszler via disqualification. Of course, you see what I'm saying. See what I'm saying? Dana Brooke beats Shayna Baszler. I'm telling you, they're gonna they're gonna be there at TLC. I mm-hmm. promise you that. Um, Nia Jax interfered, which caused the disqualification, and uh, Manny Rose came in for the save, and they helped run off the tag champions. I'm telling you, it's happening. And uh, we had Matt Riddle defeating MVP via via pinfall with a floating bro, the worst name. ever. Ever like? Are you fucking kidding me? The match was over almost as soon as it began. Basically squashing MVP here. Uh, yeah, that was that was odd. Um, yeah, it was way quicker than expected. Um, but but Matt Riddle picked up the win after he just signed a multi-year extension with WWE. Um, so that happened. Um, very forgettable week. I swear to God. We had then we had Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton play hide and seek. Bray Wyatt came out to the ring for a field trip to the Thunderdome with a with the Firefly Funhouse puppets in the crowd. Uh, Bray apologized for the fiend showing up during his match with Randy Orton last week, saying he knows he has things to he needs to fix about himself, and that he wished he got to finish their match. Orton, of course, interrupts, saying that he needs to come find him in a game of hide and seek. Uh, Wyatt ran into Riddle backstage, who pitched a segment on bro nouns for a future Funhouse segment. What do you think about that shit? 
Uh, what do you think about this whole Matt Riddle? I'm a stoner. Let's give some fucking. St- yeah, I think they're making fun of, of Tony Khan here, man. A stoner with shitty ideas. No, sounds like that's like nah, a Tony nah, Khan rib. Nah, that's fucking. That's Vince dancing on the line of fucking RVD shit again. Are they testing weed? Again? I, I, like the fact that they're like acknowledging now that he's a stu- a pothead. Well, let's think about it like this. We already know that and, and the NBA is the NBA. They're not is, testing weed. They're no not more. testing weed anymore. Nope. I believe the NFL is going to be doing it next year. They're not going to test weed anymore. It's about to be legalized everywhere. So I think so, um, WWE is going to do the same soon. And well, RVD is about to get his veterans uh, I, his contract. Boy, that's what this. This is all boiled down to fucking RVD <laughs> and fucking and. and Fucking Matt Riddle coming together, bro. Yep, yep. It's all coming. They're gonna be a tag team. The fucking high, the high flyers. Yeah. <laughs> I can see it now, yep. Vince. I can see it now. Book it now. The high flyers. And the highs in, in, in exclamation. Coming to the ring, RVD Riddle, flying high. <laughs> and their move is definitely the um. The wild trip or like the fucking the the, the <laughs> some shit um the stoner drop or some shit like that <laughs> <laughs> the edible I the don't edible know what the fuck it is uh, anything else um and then we had like I said um uh, Randy Orton lit up a casket um uh, uh, with Bray Wyatt in it on fire. And the fiend came right out of it like nothing happened. That was actually pretty cool. It though. was fire. Yeah, yeah, literally. Yeah, literally. That was actually pretty cool though. Uh, reminded me of when he lit up Undertaker uh, uh, in the casket yeah. uh, years, like years, years ago. Uh, and it was announced that their match will be a Firefly Inferno match. So uh, that happened there. That was that was a great segment. Probably my favorite segment of the night. And then we had Matt, uh, AJ Styles defeating Sheamus via pinfall um, at the main event with a jackknife pin. Uh, AJ Styles, Miz, and Morrison were all on the show. If you would have did this in the beginning of the show, people would have watched the fucking episode. Yeah, they, I would have. I actually would have watched it. <laughs> Everyone would have watched um, it. But there was supposed to be a championship ascension ceremony, and um, it was it was held um, to close the show. Styles taunted the champion. They went back and forth, uh, but at the end, AJ Styles was on top, beat down McIntyre with a ladder and a chair, uh, before putting McIntyre through a table with an elbow drop and held the belt to go off the air. What did you think about Raw this week? What was your pros? What was the main highlight that stood out for you? Hey, come on. Are you are fucking kidding me? It was, it, it, it was the it, book. Story time, right? It was, it, of course. So I felt like I was watching a Christmas story. No, what the fuck? It, it, uh, it the, was forgettable, the entire show. Yeah, except for the, the Fiend thing, and that was pretty much it. And um, AJ spot on the table. But. but WWE needs to stop relying on one segment to go over. and It's a three-hour show. I, everybody complains about the three hour show. I don't mind. A three I don't hour mind show. either, but make if it good. You fucking wrestle. I don't. It, show me wrestling. Show me fights. Show me fights. That's this shit. Jesus. I mean, everything's fucking. You. Everything's too fucking comical. Come on, man. Cut it out. So yeah. It's annoying. What else? That was my night raw. Let's start off with AEW Dynamite. I know Red has a lot to say about this. Oh, great. As we start off with Hangman Page and the Dark Order versus Matt Hardy and Private Party. Ugh. And the Dark Order came out in cowboy outfits with cowboy hats. The the whole nine. Look, but at, they my, were in, look at my little buckaroos coming out. Yep. A, uh, Hangman and his buckaroos came to the ring this week. And uh, they had a match. Here's what you need to know. Dark Order tried hard to work as a team with Page. Um, Matt Hardy tagged himself in, stole the pin from by tagging himself in after Private Party hit gin and juice on Alex Reynolds. So Matt Hardy and Private Party picked up the win here, but they were not happy that Matt Hardy took the pin and stole the win from them. What do you thought about the opening to AEW? Um, fucking bipolar. I, I don't. This is once again. Look, once again, I'm grateful that a, a show starts with, with wrestling. wrestling. Yeah, 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 great. It's a positive. I, I, I appreciate that. This match shouldn't have been in the beginning. No. It shouldn't have opened. No, but listen, you can't you nitpick compared to this compared to Oh, yes, to this I can. Compared, Believe this, no, me, I can. This compared to a Christmas story, um, TLC in the beginning, and you know, it, it was I better just, than that. I don't know. What the fuck are we doing now with, fuck, with, with, with Paige? What are we doing with him? He's going to join the Dark Order. I don't think so. I think it's... it's or I, maybe or maybe, maybe he's going to help Alex Reynolds and... Um, and um, what's his name? Wow, I wish I knew his name. Oh, John Silver. John Silver. Maybe, maybe he's gonna make them escape them. out of the Dark Order, and give them and their do, own, and, and, do and, what? and and make them the Cowboy Saloons. The 
No, you're gonna make them. I tell you, the little buckaroos. The little little buckaroos. The, the little lil. Little buckaroos. <laughs> Fucking awesome. And I guess we have a new gimmick so with Matt awesome. Hardy. Matt Hardy will now be the 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 selfish veteran, the one who um will take as much wins and pride as he can because he is the veteran. But that, I'm actually that, not mad at though. That turned quick. That turned on them quick, didn't it? Yeah, wow. Hardy party went to shit in about a month. Exactly, uh, but I am happy to see that kind of Matt Hardy though. It's a do. It's a new different twist, and I and I like the fact. Is that it really though? I'm happy for it. I don't know. It's it's almost, better than him almost, doing nothing. I it's him almost a, a return of version one or some shit. Like and that. that's a bad thing. When you're 90, yeah. I mean, uh, what the fuck? What if he do version two? Oh. I'm so excited. Oh, come on. It's better than nothing. But Matt Hardy's nothing. You're fucking Mark for, Mar- for Hardy. That's, that's the only reason why you're saying that's it. That's not true. Come on. That's not true. Hey. I actually I actually enjoyed that he stole the pin this week. I hated the match, but the finish was cool. The only thing I can say is that uh, finally uh, Quinn and fucking Isaiah had some kind of TV time, and it, it showed on their face. It was like, hey, we're on TV. Woo. <laughs> Which, by the way, I want to shout out to Isaac as he just posted that Spotify gave him a notification that our new episode is out. <laughs> like Spotify literally said, "Hey, Isaac, new episode of Turnbuckle Tabloid is out. Heartbreaking to listen now." <laughs> it's been out. <laughs> yep, but I guess um, he got it late. Um, snail mail. He got snail it. mail. <laughs> um, so then uh, after that, we had a match between Cody Rhodes and Angelico. Before the match, they announced that Brandy is pregnant, which we discussed about in Wrestling Rundown, which you could check out. It's a work, ladies and gentlemen. It's a work. He thinks it's a work. It's a work. Um, Until I see that baby, it's a work. A lot of the match takes place during a picture-in-picture, picture, so no one gave a fuck. Basically, this was just yeah, a that was stupid. Basically, this was to hype up the pregnancy announcement. No one cared about this match. That was so stupid. Um, Cody won with a springboard cutter. Um, and then Taz comes out while Cody is celebrating with his newly expanded team. Uh, they talk some trash while Darby Allen watches from the stands. Taz says that they're coming to the ring to beat up Cody. And, of course, it's Sting! It's Sting. Sorry, did you say that enough? It's Sting! No, I'm kidding. Sting comes out. Points his bat at Darby Allen, at everybody, and walks away. Yeah, because, you know, I'm going to be afraid of a 61-year-old man with a bat. Get off my lawn! Get <laughs> off my lawn! <laughs> are you are you, are you you excited for a Sting and Darby Allen match? No. Not at all. <laughs> no. You know what this match reminds me of? Like, a skateboard kid getting told to get off his lawn. Like you just said. And literally, it's going to be like that. You those YouTube videos. Get off my lawn! You can't skateboard on private property! Oh, but you was excited about Seth and Sting. No, I wasn't. I was not. I wasn't at all. I was not. No. I was not. Sometimes nostalgia is not good as good as in-ring work. Yeah, exactly. Uh, after the commercial break, we have Alex Marvez talking to Miro in the worst promo ever. What the fuck was he wearing? What the fuck was he wearing? Someone told me, it's drip, it's drip. I'm like, Christmas jingle bells is drip? All right, take that fucking hoodie off. Uh, that shit is terrible. That beard looks disgusting. Yeah, yeah, that shit looks like it has birds in it. <laughs> it has a nest in it. So uh, gross. Um, Miro says that next week he's going to announce the date of Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford's wedding. Oh, finally. Finally, the wedding's coming. Finally. I'm hoping that the wedding ends up in Miro being the shit out of both of them. Uh, I really do, um, but I could, I don't believe it's Which, happen. honestly, you know what that means? Nothing. You brought him yeah, in for, for nothing, nothing with the bullshit. To give him the, the the gimmick name, the best man, still shit. It is shit. Uh, after that, we have a commercial. Then we go into an, a promo with Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston comes to the ring. He trashes the crowd. Um, and he says the first enemy is God. What about that shit? Yeah. That I, was weird. I was kind of thrown off by that one, but uh, the rest of the promo was all right. He said the first enemy, God. Second enemy, Pac. Kingston says that when that Pac went home, he's not coming back. His career is over. I'm, su- I'm surprised somebody didn't fucking give him a backlash on fucking Twitter. Over I that know. Shit. All the Christians were in disbelief. Yeah, right. And the third enemy was Lance Archer. Can you explain to me what you mean that God is the enemy? Yeah. Uh, that's not what the Bible says. What does that mean? Um, he says that his his third enemy is Lance Archer, and Archer runs out and kicks the, sh- the shit out of Eddie Kingston. But, of course, the Butcher, Blade, and the Bunny run out to save Kingston. They beat Archer down with some difficulty, but then the Lucha Bros show, out, show up. They face off. Pac comes running out of nowhere. It, it turns into a fucking absolute train wreck. That but- shit was the most 
fucking but that happened last r- week ridiculous smas that I've ever seen <laughs> it reminded me it, re- it reminded me of my family Christmas party yeah exactly that shit look it should make no mm-hmm. sense it's like arguing over the last piece of chicken when it's like there's no more chicken <laughs> I want the last piece there isn't anymore I ate the last piece already it's, it's gone. already gone two hours ago it's over but I still want it it made no sense it was all over the place you got fucking heels fighting heels what, the, what are we doing here guys <laughs> the clusterfuck of clusterfucks oh by the way Breaking Breaking news. News. Whoa. WWE files a trademark for the collective. <laughs> what? <laughs> the collective? Yeah, the collective. Guess what? GCW can't use it anymore. Yes, <laughs> yes, yikes. <laughs> Whoops. Whoopsie. <laughs> I, wish, I wish Isaac was here. I WWE is petty as fuck. Fucked They're up. tight. The collective. That shit is probably gonna be a fucking a, a faction. Yeah, yeah. No, it might. It will. It, I yep. think it, it really will. Yeah, it's gonna be a faction. It really will. Um, you can't use it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to call yourself GCW Collective. It has to be like one. Yeah, word. one word. GCW oh, no, the Collective. The C. The C has to be a dollar sign. You gotta like change it up and shit. I'm weak. After we get after a promo with Dustin Rhodes, um, with Dasha in the back, we get best friends, varsity blondes, and top flight versus the inner circle. Up next, we had um. <laughs> up next, the, the cl- listen. I it, why do we have an 18 man tag team match? It was actually it, it got it got um whittled down to a 12 man because uh, Wardlow wasn't there and uh, they cut out uh Brandon Cutler. But yikes, and he prom- and he and he promoted that shit. <laughs> yikes, and he promoted that shit against fucking Jim Cornette. Oh, no, oh Joe my Allen, god! So, yow. Oh man. Uh, more? What the fuck's going on? Just announced on AEW Dark, which I believe you're gonna be a fan of this. Uh, Peter oh. Avalon versus Mike Verna. Yeah, I saw him. Mike Verna is going to AEW Dark, and I am so happy for him, man. True diehard Met fan. He's been a, a star in the indies for years now in New York. Uh, the guy's an actor. He he and, and he's a great talent. So I, does he not look like a superstar? He does look like a star. He's a little tiny. Yeah. But but yeah. buddy buddy looks great yeah. and I'm happy for him man. Yeah. Up next JT Dunn. I gotta see JT Dunn in AEW next. Oh he should have yeah he, he should be signed for years now. I don't know what the but fuck I, the deal is. But I heard he's a bit of an asshole. He is. But but, but, but buddy's but, best but, friends with Murphy. He's best friends with fucking Brody Lee. But but it leads up to the fucking main event which was like woo but okay. Um, as for the the twelve man. Uh, yeah talk ex- about this one because I fucking ex- fell asleep. In this shit. Uh. You you built this up to be the inner circle versus whoever the fuck, right? Fine, it's great. I, you know, I wouldn't. I don't mind seeing the inner circle get involved in matches in, in one collective uh, whole. But you did all this to put over top flight. What the <laughs> fuck are we doing here, guys? Yeah, yeah. they just fucking got They're here. They're nineteen and twenty. They just got here. Yeah. Yep. Just because they had, oh my god, they had a fucking great match with Young Bucks. Well, they really didn't, but all right. But this is what we're doing now. <sighs> Move over, private party. Somebody's taking your job. Basically. Next up. All these tag teams. I'm, I'm happy they're signing these young kids, but like not fucking blowing them down my throat. But it's, all at once, once again, it's that whole premise like we mentioned before. Dude, you bring in these young fucks and. They're talented They're athletic But nobody's teaching them shit Right You're right there's They no, all no... look like indie mess And and I gotta be honest with You're you You're not tuning them up This is not gonna You know as, as you can see with the ratings They're not moving up They're not They only move up Yeah During like Pay-per-views Yeah the, or, or, or special quote, shows or Special shows They still stay stagnant NXT in won there. this week uh, No they didn't But they went up They went up 100,000 vo- um, viewers Um and it, um, AEW, I think it was 860, and uh, NXT was 760, something like that. Uh, so, okay. oh no, it was something. It was it was they were close. It was probably maybe like less than a thousand, a hundred thousand uh, in viewership. But still, you're still staying in the same level. Like you're not, you're not. Not everybody's an indie fan, dude. Everybody wants to see fucking wrestling, but not the same shit. But that, that's another fucking rant. Next up. I agree. Up next, we had uh, a Thunder Rosa promo. Uh, Rosa just talking about Britt Baker. She's cute as fuck, but uh, her accent is kind of... It's like, terrible. And I'm Spanish, and it's just... Britt says that um, Rosa... Do you want to fight? I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm meant to be here, okay? 
I went and I fought for the NWA Women's Championship. Ugh. But I'm meant to be here, so you need to take your big nose and put it somewhere else. It sounds like she's gonna hit me with a chunkler. Sounds like one of my aunts. Yeah, bro, well, like <laughs> fucking Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> she's not my aunt. I know, I know, but I know. So, you know what I'm saying? A fan. That motherfucker. That motherfucker. Uh, pff, shout out to Wanda, everyone. <laughs> um, then we had Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian versus The Acclaimed. And Red, um, SCU came to the ring and they both had a rap battle. I can't. I, I really can't. I can't with this company. Bro. He accuses Kazarian of having hair plugs. Kazarian grabs the mic and cuts his own rap in response. He doesn't have hair plugs though. I know. It's just weird. that's a weird thing. I mean, uh, unless unless I'm, I I don't think I don't think so. He just like to cut his hair short, and you see his hair grow back. Yeah. So I don't understand. The acclaim get to the ring, and and when one of them hits Christopher Daniels in the face with his boombox. I forget that that's the acclaimed a boom. wins. I forget that I forget that's a boombox. Yeah, it's a boombox. Yeah, because I think boombox, I think big radio, yeah. but I forgot that that's what that is. It's a um, it's a it's a, it's a boombox mini. It's a no, it's a it's just an Apple fucking boombox. Whatever the fuck it's that an says. iHome. <laughs> whatever the shit. Says. Um, uh, I, I I I I can't. I I and mind you, not to take away from the match. The match wasn't bad. It was a decent. Match. I like the acclaimed, but like their gimmick is just. And then the interaction at the end because. Now, what the fuck is going on <laughs> right there? Sounds like fucking a concert is going on in my house. Uh, the Young Bucks, first of all, the Young Bucks are the most blandest fucking wrestling faces in the history of fucking wrestling. Yeah, bro. they're so boring. They are. They're, they're milk with... No cereal. <laughs> just... They're not even milk. They're just... They, they're, I can't even say soy. I don't... Uh, skim, I guess. There's skim milk. I, I, I guess. There's no nothing to them. They, Even when they're angry, you just want to grab them by the cheek and go, oh, you're cute. Look at you trying to be angry. You're Matt with that facial hair. Oh. Oh, go ahead, Nick, with your receding hair. Get out of here, sir. Yikes. Get out of here, sir. But even them sitting there with their... You, you, you might as well be heels. Honestly, right. like you just might as well be heels. But once again, you turn face or oh, whatever the well, fuck they don't it believe is in face or heel. They don't believe in that. Whatever, shit no but more. you turn this because you're trying to put another tag team over. Nobody works to get to the level anymore. It's whoever comes into the company now is on. Yep, they're on. Nobody work. Like if you to put a claim versus Top Fly against. Each other, and then they go up against private party. Then you build up to it. Yep. Now it's just they're in. Now you get a title shot. All right, whatever. And then now there's this. Uh, I think they're teasing a a a breakup between SCU because at the end of the match, Kazarian was upset because his partner got hit in the head with a boombox. Oh well. The fuck. I don't even. Oh, by the way, you got hit in the head with a boombox. Nobody bleeds. Which I'll actually be happy about SCU breaking up because I want Fallen Angel one more time before he cro fucking retires. Did you say croak? <laughs> no, I said before. Um, yeah, did said I say croak. that? Croak. I think you said croak. No, I said before they before they retire. I'm gonna play this back. It sounds like you said All croak. Right. Well, if I did, I'll say it right now. Before they croak. <laughs> um, fuck them. I don't even care. Um, after that, we had Evie Lee and Diamante versus Big Swole and Serena Deeb. Wasn't a bad match. Then we I'm had not... Joey Janela. Uh, stop. Oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What, wasn't a bad match because because Evie Lee and Diamante are actually good. <laughs> And Serena, and Serena Deeb's Deeb's not baby, good, baby, but a big swole. Whoa. They gave her the finish. Of course they did. Oh. Now the Rhodes and Vicky come out to jump swollen Deeb. Uh. Then we have Red Velvet run out to make the save. Uh. Uh. At least they're trying to have the same faces on the Women's Division every week. I guess. Uh, best Friends cut a promo on Miro. Then we have... Um, the commentary go through the rest of next week's Dynamite. And then we finally have Joey Janela versus Kenny Omega for no, the... No, no. You missed it. What did I miss? Um, uh, uh, um, I forgot. But the with the um the, the the inner circle thing, they had Orange Cassidy during the twelve on uh, the twelve man. Oh, go ahead. On commentary. And oh they, yeah, and the and the fucking cords were out, and they were wrapped <laughs> around his neck. Why didn't you just have him ringside, ringside? And get him involved in the match because they want to promote that he fucking is lazy. It's like, oh my yeah, god. Yeah, but somebody could have somebody could have been thrown on top of him. And it would have sparked something. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I can't. And then we have the main event, like you said. Kenny and Joey Janela in a AEW, I can't believe this, 
This match was for the championship. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I, I, I honestly feel like it's it's so easy to become a wrestler nowadays. You could be shit and get AEW World Championship matches. Listen, I don't fucking get it. Um, let's just go through the match and I'll ask your opinion after Red. Um, it was no DQ, obviously. Of course, because none, none of these championship matches can be regular wrestling can matches. Can regular be a regular match? No, please. Don Callis wants to get, take Tony Schiavone's so, so, um, seat in the commentary table, and he said... <laughs> He said to get away from him, you piece of shit, and like he went off on Don Callis. I find that funny though. That, that, uh, that was funny. That was funny. Uh, he gives the mic. Uh, I like when Shivani almost gets real, like, yeah, like yeah. when Ross almost gets real. Right. Okay, Don Callis gives the mic to Kenny. So during the match, Kenny's... another bland individual. Yeah, no. It's like Kenny hearing does... him talk is like watching paint fucking dry. Kenny does his own commentary while kicking Joey Janela's ass. He hits a moonsault with a garbage can. All right, Rock, nineteen ninety fucking yep. seven. He also hits a springboard double stomp on top of the can on top of Janela, and he won. Game over. V trigger. One winged angel. Kenny Omega is your still your. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was um I was watching the match and I fucking walked away. I did too. I walked away. I had to watch. I had to watch it in um in um the ups and downs of of on um what is um what culture because I once they said no DQ and I guess it was supposed to be the match that Joey Janela was supposed to have during the tournament. Ugh, yeah. And then Sonny and I, I, I can't. I said I can't with this fucking. At people. least next week we get Kenny and fucking Phoenix. I said I can't. I, I as much as I want to love. Fucking AEW, I, I this bothers me. Yeah, it nah. really fucking bothers me. And then, Joey Janela of all people get a shot. Why can you not put Kenny in a regular match with Joey? Make him make him look like a try to make him look like a decent wrestler. Right. Not have to pull out the fucking gimmick bullshit. Garbage can. I I really genuinely believe that Joey cannot be there that long. It's it's it, it's it, coming. It it can't it can't. No, he's gonna be back in GCW exclusively for. I'm but, telling you, uh, if, tell me soon. When I heard his um, his uh, uh, his fucking um, his his interview with with um, Coca Banna, I was sitting there going, he doesn't care. Like he really doesn't give no, a fuck. No, he, he doesn't. He doesn't give a fuck. Honestly, it, it's like whatever you want me to do, dudes. And it's like, all right, I'm in the main event in AEW, and I'm gonna be shit. <laughs> No problem. There's you no credibility what? in the main events anymore. The main events don't matter anymore. No, no. Not in this shit, no. No, they don't. And you just put fucking Kenny Omega in his first title defense. And With it's... Joey fucking Janela. Which, Think by the way, that. by the way, I was watching snippets of the AAA fucking um, event in which um, Laredo Kid had a match with Kenny Omega. Laredo looked good. Omega looked like shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to oh, say... man. I don't know how they allow their champion to do what the fuck they do. Right. Because, God forbid this fucking guy gets hurt, your whole fucking storyline is out the window. It's all fucked. But, whatever, Tony Khan. This, this, whatever. <laughs> I don't I don't know. That's why I put on fucking on the Facebook page, create your own promo or your promotion. Right. Tell me, tell me, tell me why would you make yours? Because what they're doing now is not good enough for me. <sighs> Next so let's up. go to NXT quickly as we had Leon Ruff versus, uh, no, sorry, Leon Ruff and Kushida versus Johnny Gargano and Austin Theory. Um, a no-nonsense start to NXT. We start off with wrestling. That's what you want. You got it. Johnny, yes, please. Gargano and Theory come out to face um, them. Of course, we cancel the rain. Indy Hartwell joining them and ringside. Theory picks him back up. We get the Theory gets the pin with a new finisher. What do you thought about the new finisher by Austin Theory? I like it, but I, I'm I'm also kind of conflicted because the face buster sort of right. But who are we supposed to fucking put over here? Uh, you just got the guy back. Austin I think Austin And he was barely In the fucking match Yeah but he got he the pin He got the pin Yeah he did get the pin Well, the, well yeah He got the finish In the pin That's what matters At the end of the match That's what matters Yeah you're right um, So we have Gargano And Austin Theory With the win there um, Which I still think Kushida should be facing Finn Balor for the belt in My opinion Don't take step backs With Kushida Only step forward um, Dexter Loomis Is on a platform In the COVID Wrestling Center That's what I call it Um <laughs> Dexter Loom is in a plexiglass um, stage drawing on an iPad Pro. I'm sorry. That was fucking stupid. Um, in a video then, we had Tony, Sto Tony Storm cutting a promo on Rhea Ripley that they'll fight in the main event tonight. I like the, video. I, like the video. I like the video breakdown of that. Yeah, that was pretty cool. 
Uh, Mackenzie Mitchell talks to Shotzi Blackheart. Blackheart says War Games is over, but her war with Candice LeRae is not. And then we get a match between Tommaso Ciampa and Tyler Rust. What do you think about that match up there? What are they doing? What are they doing with Ciampa? Is he like in a random weird place right now? He's in limbo right now, but yeah, it's he's in right. limbo. He's in limbo, but I like it that it's with Thatcher though. It's fine. Yes, which I think Tyler Rust is one of his students. Yes. Right. Tommaso Ciampa comes out and sets up a chair on the ramp and puts Timothy Thatcher's shirt on it, saying to come sit down and watch the match, which I thought was very cool. uh, Russ put up a good fight here trying to work Ciampa's left arm for submission, which I thought was great. It's like fighting one of the Bowser Koopa kids instead of fighting (laughs) before you face Bowser. Yeah, you gotta. It was like you you have to go through Bowser Jr. to face face Bowser. (laughs) Which, by the way, um, did you see Nintendo World in Japan? Yes. That shit looks fucking. Oh, oh my god You wanna go to Japan? I have to go <laughs> I have to fucking go um, It has to happen Ladies and gentlemen It has to happen uh, Of course Ciampa pulls off the win With a Willow's Bell For the win As expected Thatcher comes out After the match Trying to get it Ciampa But referee blocks him And Ciampa mocks him Then we had a video With the Grizzled Young Vets that, And they make the case That they have had A lot of momentum Eight months ago And now NXT has changed but they deserve an NXT Tag Team Championship opportunity. I think it's way too soon, brothers. Too well, they, soon. they remind me of, of what's going on with the Acclaim. The Acclaim uh, apparently had eight wins in a row, and it's like, where? <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> on Dark, silly! It's like, no. Oh, right. That show. Like, that matters. Right. Um, we get a promo then for Carrie and Cross, and then see that during the commercial break, Malcolm Bivens seemingly got Tyler Russ to hire Bivens as a manager. What? Uh, what? Wait, wait, okay. They, they're trying to get Bivens' work. And you know what? Bivens Because can... the last time he had those two Indian guys as a what tag team... What happened to them? They're going to go to NXT India. Oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Gonna, that's where it's going to be at. You're right. Um, so I guess he needs to find a new client, which, by the way, um, I don't know if, you, I don't know if you've, you've seen the rumor right now, but supposedly they're waiting... Um, the reason why we haven't seen the Robert Stone brand for a long time is because supposedly they're going to... It's going to be Molina. And that's going to be his next one, but yeah, but they, but because it was spoiled, they want to wait a little bit longer to uh, to, to oh. for, so people will forget. Oh, okay. Hope she could say fucking sober. And hopefully she could um not vent to me while being drunk at an indie show. People always think that I can talk, and it's just that they oh don't. Oh my god! Get me. No, she legitimately put, she literally hugged me and said, "Everyone thinks I fucked Batista. I didn't fucking fuck Batista. I'm not this. Can you call my show or not? I didn't." <laughs> I, 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 if I knew it was gonna be like that, you would have never I, threw it my way. <laughs> I'd have hit the phone and fucking press record. Let's go. Oh, that's why you, you don't ask me to go do things. Oh, that's all right. At least you got a hug from her, though. Yo, she, yo, she, she got mad personal with me. She was like, "I go home and everyone hates on me." Ugh. I, I, you know, I want to, I want to do. You're pod- a bad drunk, aren't you? Who, <laughs> this who? is Melina. Yeah, yeah. You're a bad drunk. She like got up on my, on my face. She hugged me. She was like, "Oh, thank you for listening." And how do how like how do you like and that was when I was fat, and that was when I was fat yeah that's and it. Wimpy. how you didn't appreciate that I'd have been like if she did that to me I'd have been like so what are you doing tonight <laughs> <laughs> I think now I have a better chance to say that but what do we what do we do, what are we doing tonight see now my confidence is better so now I would have I would probably would have said some shit like that but now but I've been stroking then, my beard hmm. Fuck you, Widow Nightingale. All right. <laughs> um, what? Who said that? Because that was the girl who, that, who said no to our interview. That yeah, week, yeah. yeah. Uh, then we got. Um, Pete Dunne versus Kyle O'Reilly, and the winner will face Finn Balor at NXT New Year's Evil. And the winner was Kyle O'Reilly. What do you thought about the match, buddy? Great fucking match, man. Great. Probably, probably, out of the two matches of the night, it was up there as matches. It was of the one night of my between. matches of the week. Yeah, yeah. They and I think I they did. Th- you know, they laid in there, man. And, 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 and Pete Dunne and Kyle O'Reilly for me, they went from people who thought their their ceiling was mid card, and I think that that's wrong. I Hell think they're no. main event stars, man. Pete busted his lip and all that shit during that match, man. Shit, man. It's fucking nah, man. I, I I see. They need they need the NXT six again. And those two guys will be in the NXT. I agree. Yeah, I agree. And NXT that that was a great match, and to see Finn Balor and Kyle O'Reilly too. Do it right without any injuries or anything. I'm happy to see it. Uh, we get an interview by Rhea Ripley backstage. Hold on, let me just get up, catch up here. Yeah, Rhea Ripley talks some trash about Raquel Gonzalez and Tony Storm, and they have more business to take care of against each other. Blah 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 blah. blah. That was cool. Then we had um, more physical and emotional abuse for Zia Lee and Boa. This time, Zia Lee is being forced to beat the shit out of Boa. Move along. <laughs> How, how far along are we going to be doing these fucking Saturday afternoon fucking uh, 
martial arts <laughs> fucking Chinese cinema, warrior c- cinema fucking torture videos man I know shit is like a snuff film I know shit Shotzi Blackheart fought Indy Hartwell this week and uh, Shotzi Blackheart won by DQ um we see the same video from Karrion Cross, uh, okay, but then we get a squash match between Karrion Cross and Desmond Troy. As well as supposed to happen. As well as, it's, as well as it should. And after the break, we get a short video that tells us Bronson Reed will be back next week as well. I didn't even know he was gone. I'll be, be honest. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. Karrion Cross gets the win here, and I and and I, and, and I can only I can already tell you, bro. New Year's Eve will have Karrion Cross versus Damian Priest. What's it? Yeah, Bronson Reed was injured for a little bit. That's really? Right. Yeah, he was out. I didn't, I didn't know he yeah, was gone. Yeah, it wasn't a big injury. He had like a, a thing they had to deal with. Um, then we get um, we get an interview with Isaiah Swerve as uh, why he wouldn't shake Jake Atlas's hand last week. Swerve said that he um, c- Swerve claims to be over it, but clearly thinks he's better than Jake Atlas. Imagine you just said something homophobic. I'd be like, holy! I don't shit. touch mooks. <laughs> I'd be like, uh, what? Like what? Fuck? Ever rise next? Uh, we get Tony Storm and Rhea Ripley in a match, and Tony Storm picks up the win. People are saying Rhea Ripley went from star to zero. What do you think about the career right now and placement of Rhea Ripley? Yeah, they booking her like shit. But I think that's and people said that, that that her loss to to Charlotte Flair was the beginning of the end. Uh, yes, because it wasn't needed. Yeah, she didn't have to lose, especially if you're gonna fucking take Charlotte off a of TV. It was a bad move. It was, it, it was dumb. Yes. But then the other thing is, um, you put her in stupid fucking angles with you know the stone fucking business shit, and now in this and in, in in this run, it's it, it wasn't a bad loss, but. Um, there has to be a come up for her soon. It has to be. Yes. You, you, she's the she's hottest. She's too big of a star to, the, to be wasted. She's, she's the she's the fucking hottest woman wrestler right now. So so they waste her. So it's a waste on them. But the match was great though. Yeah, Tony it was a good match. Was fucking awesome. It was a good match. Tony Storm. Yeah, that's t- what I said. Are those two matches? It was. It was. Women's had great showings this week. Yeah. Um, Tony Storm picked up the win, but we had um, Raquel Gonzalez interfering, shoving Ripley, Ripley into the post. You know, that's what I said. That makes sense. Which, by the way, Tony Storm's name for her finish is awesome. Storm Zero. Storm Zero. Yeah. I fuck with that heavy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and I think Rhea Ripley will be all right. I I really do. Um, so before we close it off and go to SmackDown, yeah, she had. She remember we had. Remember we saw about uh, like one of the nominees for like disappointment of 2020. Rhea Ripley's, Rhea Ripley's on, on there. there. Yeah. Unfortunate. It's not. Yeah. It's not even her doing. Yeah, it's, but it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's booking. Bad. Before we go to SmackDown, Red, did you watch Impact this week? What did you get out of it? We had nope. the. Not at all. Yikes. Well, the one thing I will say, the highlight of Impact this week was the reunion of the Bullet Club, as it was announced that it will be Kenny Omega and the Bullet Club versus Rich Swan and... Um Oh, and the um, Motor City Machine Guns, yeah. uh, six-man tag at, um, at the next Impact pay-per-view. Which, hopefully, neither one takes the pin. Right. Because the, the, the outlook is for a champion versus champion match. Yeah. But once again, I don't want to see Rich Swan versus Kenny Omega. I don't. I if, see that. You know, you know, Isaac, Isaac made a. And good, I love Rich Swan. He's been, he was very really cool to us whenever he meets us and we talk to him and everything. Yeah, but I it's just don't not. Really see that. And, and to be honest with you, I, I was talking to Isaac and he told me that Impact star right now is Ethan Page. And, and, and we said that, but he's leaving. <laughs> I know, but if unless he, they sign him with some big shit. Wait, new AW and Impact partnership. You might maybe ha- might want to stay now, huh? Maybe. Uh, there's a chance. There's a chance for that to happen. <clears throat> Besides that, Impact was a bunch of. X division matches. Um ah, but you also think about it like this. If he goes uh, to fucking um NXT, he'll be part of that new um The Collective. <laughs> yeah, you never know. You I like I lo- listen, if anyone doesn't know, I love Ethan Page. I've known him since he was all ego. He's a, he's great. He's in best the best shape of his fucking life right now. The dude is worth a paycheck. So for everyone to say he's leaving, he's gonna go to bullshit. No, he's really not. He's actually a I think he's a superstar. But. I don't know. I can, I can see him and fucking uh, Austin Theory doing some nice things, man. How? What? He could join the fucking Gargano family. Shit. Him and Gargano and fucking Theory? Yeah. That sounds pretty fire. So let's go straight to uh, SmackDown to close out this segment. And it started off with Kevin Owens heading to the ring to open SmackDown. And I absolutely thought this was stupid. I hated it. Uh, I love the story between Kevin Owens and Roman. I'm not mad at their story. I'm mad at how they started the show. Kevin Owens opens the show, calls out Roman Reigns. Then Kevin Owens stalls for three fucking sentences, then runs, and then Paul Heyman comes out um, via Titan Tron and says he ships Owens and Reigns in a... I can't even say this word. A sad massive... Whatever. What? Okay, basically he said that he loves Owens and Reigns to fight each other. Owens is a great talent and that he deserves to be in a Universal Championship spot and that 
Kevin Owens deserves this, but he also did say that he that um, that Roman Reigns will destroy him. Blah blah blah. He said that he's gonna go look for Roman. Kevin Owens makes it to Roman Reigns' private dressing room with Adam Pearce begging him not to start trouble. But as soon as he gets to Roman Reigns' door, Roman pl- Roman's music plays and he heads out to the ring. <laughs> so they switched places. Um, I don't know if that's playing mind games with Kevin. I don't know if that's what they meant to do. But it was just like, okay, they could have just met. Like, who fucking cares? Um, Owens stares pissed off at the television screen. And we have Roman Reigns saying that he's not a bad guy. He's the guy. He's going to be the good guy because he gives Owens an opportunity to acknowledge Roman as the tribal chief this week and just end this feud. He um, And if he said if he doesn't acknowledge Roman Reigns, that Owens won't make it to TLC. Owens heads back to the ring and, and gets jumped from behind by Jey Uso before he makes it there. Roman joins the beatdown. But, of course, Adam Pearce, Pat Buck, and Jamie Noble and some more referees stand around looking very concerned, not breaking them up. The Roman family, the Reigns family leaves, and we go into commercial break. What do you thought about the opening of SmackDown? You watch SmackDown? Um, I thought it was okay. The only thing is that my problem was that we always get Kevin going after the chase somebody. Right. Uh, it's always, if you don't want to come to the ring, I'll come to you. Uh, we, we always get Kevin doing that. Uh, Switch it up every once in a while. I was trying to figure out what the word was that you was trying to say. <laughs> want me to spell it? Yeah. It's S A D O M A. Uh, a wait, sorry, so sadomasochistic, sadomastic, sadomasochistic. Sadomastic, sadomastic, oh, I can't even say it myself. It sounds worse than super fragilistic yeah. expialidocious. What the fuck? Sadoma- huh. sado- sadomastic is. Yes, 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 there yes. Go. God damn, that's a word. Woof. I'm burnt out. Yeah, sadomasochist. I'm burnt. Sadomasochist. Uh, SmackDown Tag Team Championship matches. We had the Street Profits facing Z- Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, uh, and of course. Um, the Street Profits retain in a, actually not a bad match. Not a bad match. After the match, we get Ziggler and Rude going off on Charles Robinson about their loss, and Charles Robinson said that he'll suspend them. Uh, no I questions like this. asked. I actually love that. Red, explain why you love that, because I actually thought that was a real ESPN sports-like feel. Exactly, and I felt as though that this actually builds the credibility of the work in the ring. And the refs and everything. Yes. I, it was, I think it was a plus need, all across the board. We need more of that. Absolutely. Um, I agree 100%. We have an interview with Bianca Belair. She asks what's a, what a victory over Bailey would mean. Bianca says that it would mean everything, and she's going to kick her ass, blah, blah, blah. Then we have Riot Squad versus Billy Kay and Mystery Partner, which was Tamina. <sighs> Billy Kay comes out to the stage. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, Billy Kay comes out to the stage and announces Tamina will be her tag team partner tonight, delighting the dozens of Tamina fans. Yeah, that's sarcasm. Uh, squ- uh, Riot Squad hits a double team move on Billy Kay and gets the pin in under two minutes. Then we have a promo by Carmella as Carmella's assistant has set up a champagne table in the ring. Carmella heads to the ring and sings some Christmas carols. She accuses all viewers of SmackDown of owning futons and claims her bottles of champagne cost over $10 million. She talks some trash about Sasha Banks. Carmella claims she's even in Sasha's head and that Sasha will have a mental breakdown when she loses at TLC. Okay. Carmella asks for a glass of champagne and tastes it. She doesn't like it because it reminds her of Sasha. Sasha interrupts. A brawl ensues and Sasha gets a glass broken on her. What do you thought about that? Yeah. N- no. It seems like we did this last week. Yeah. yeah. I, I, did Carmella look good? Yeah. Like presence wise and promo wise, like I was. I, I looked, she looked good, but yeah. just bleh. Um. Then we had. Otis versus Nakamura. Otis, of course, Chad Gable by his side. And the one thing I liked from this match was when Otis was going for the Caterpillar, Chad Gable said, no, 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 no. Let's get serious. Do a fucking legit move. Right, right. I appreciated that. Uh, that, that. That minor detail actually meant a lot to me um, because he was facing Nakamura and there's no time for bullshit and Caterpillar games. Um, so Otis tried to do the Caterpillar during the match and Shorty G corrected him. I'm, I'm still. Oh, am, but, but, am I, am I but 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 this Otis shit? but you heard what Chad Gable said. Um, you know what he told him, right? Um, he goes, "You're a big man. That's not how big men are supposed to wrestle." But, but, but this is what I'm saying. What, what am I missing here? Nothing. With I don't this, think I think he's a Otis waste. Thing? He reminds me of ZZ from fucking Tough Enough. Yeah, I don't. I don't. He's what ZZ. He's what they wanted from ZZ, bro. I'm telling you. I, I guess I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't. I don't like it. 
Uh, but I do like. But like, Otis I, I, wins. I, I, I like the coaching Gable. I, like I do that. too. Uh, reminds me of Kurt Angle. Um, don't know why, but just the Olympic. But aspect. then you did this with Nakamura. Yeah, out of all people, really. You did it with Nakamura. <laughs> do you? I gotta say that name one more time. Nakamura. But Nakamura. You had anybody else to do this with on the roster? Any of the Lucha House Party moves? Anybody? Yeah, anybody? And you did it with Nakamura. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, how the mighty have fallen. Yeah, Shit. yeah, yeah. He went from WWE champion to WWE disaster. Hey, listen, he must love surfing. <laughs> yeah. Christ. Yeah, honestly. Then we have had... another one I just says, fuck it, give me a check. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah, seriously, you're right. I just want to retire and have my money. Yeah, he don't give a fuck. Then we have the first annual Sammy Awards, which was the best part of SmackDown. I smell gimmick infringement, sirs. Yes, gimmick infringement. Um, we had... He uh, was dressed to the nines. I oh, his hair looked fucking hilarious. It was fucking great. Uh, we showed... Probably all, one of the best fucking heels in the all business. All the right awards now. were Sami Zayn's action figures, gold spray painted. It's it, fucking it hilarious. It was fucking amazing. Whoever made this up was genius. But you know what? This is this is good uh, uh, segue comedy. Yes, it was. This is good It made segment. sense. That's, that's Sami Zayn for that's you. That's Sami's gimmick. Yep. It's not the whole fucking roster. Nope. It's, it's Sammy. Sammy. Yep. And it makes sense. Uh, he gives out the awards, comeback of the year, match of the year. Both winners, of course, were Sammy Zayn. Get the fuck out of here. I know, right? Damn it. He gives a little speech after each one, but the superstar of the year actually wasn't Sammy. It was Big E. Hey, what the steal? Big E comes out in a tuxedo shirt and bow tie, <laughs> grabs the award and gives a speech. Sammy shoves him out of the way and tries to re um, retake the award back. Big E kicks the crap out of him, thanks the Thunderdome for his award, and leaves with it. Great segment. And the last match of the night, we had Bianca Belair versus Bailey, and Bailey won clean. Play those fucking crickets. What do you thought about this match, right? Because a lot of people are pissed off that Bianca Belair did not win this. I think it's a longer story. I think it'll end up being good for Bianca. Not every fucking person could win every week, and I think it adds Bailey some credibility. What do you think? She's a heel. It's a chase runner for um, Bianca. Um, but you also got to remember that fucking um, Bailey lost to Natalia. Yeah. What? The yeah. Fuck? See what I'm saying? There's no. There's no backtracking. Yeah. Here. There's no consistency. None. Bailey can't be on a loss. Like she can't yeah, go through a losing. It's okay. Streak. It's all right for her. She's she, 2020 was her year. She might win Superstar of the Year. Uh, but if Bianca wins the next one, what? I mean, how does that elevate her? Does it? I don't. I, like I said, I I I see why they did it, but clean? No. Don't get it. Nah. And finally, we had Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens closing off the show by stacking a bunch of chairs, tables, and ladders on top of Kevin Owens, basically killing the man. Uh, Owens wobbles to the ring. He gets past Jey Uso, but he hits a spear by Reigns. Um, a fake You Suck chant uh, accompanied Roman this week. It sounded <laughs> they terrible. Have the worst fucking they have the audio. worst. It's like, You suck. All you have you to do suck. is like, Turn it down a little bit. Yeah, it sounds more realistic. Yeah, you don't have to be so. Yo, it literally hears like, You suck. Yeah. You suck. It's probably one... <laughs> it sounds like a robot. It's probably one of the fucking producers in the back doing it. <laughs> Stupid shit. He's telling Carmella while she's getting, giving him a tone, dome piece. Give him brain. You suck. <laughs> uh, so at the end of the night, we had, of course, um, Kevin on top of all the all the all the weaponry to close out SmackDown, and I thought SmackDown was pretty good this week. Uh, uh, the close out, I like the closing. The closing worked for me. Closing worked. Yeah. So that's what I watched this week. That's the round of squared circle. But before we go, Red, who is your superstar of the week? My superstar of the week has to go to. Give it to two. I gotta give it to Rhea Ripley and Tony Storm. I like the way they they, they put together their match. Although it could have been Kyle O'Reilly and, and and Pete Dunne, but I gotta say it's a uh, uh, Storm and O'Reilly and um, Rhea. And I'm happy you said that because my superstar of the week goes to Pete Dunne and Ky and Kyle O'Reilly, as Kyle O'Reilly and Pete Dunne showed their shit ton tonight and every week on NXT, proving that they belong in the main event picture. Kyle O'Reilly belongs. So I'm very happy to see that. All right, guys. That's going to wrap us up here at Turbuckle Tabloid. Make sure you check us out on all the social media outlets. Check us out on all the podcasting outlets. And check us out wherever the fuck you can, which is, as always, on RageWorksNetwork.com and as well as RageWorks.net. So, guys, I am your host, Jada Santi. 
And I am the Mook Olski. And we are out of here. So, guys, take a bump. Enjoy your holidays and enjoy your upcoming week. Be safe. Wear a mask. Drink responsibility. Or responsibility, hear me? Drink responsible. Yikes. And um, stay off the crack. Unless you're eating it. If you know, you know what I mean. Later. Turnbuckle tabloid. Three, two, one.